All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number 154 with Mutz for his second appearance on the cast. Mutz, how are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic, man. Really excited for the cast. Uh, second time, so yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and this is uh, definitely um, after a lot has happened, which we'll mm -hmm. get into. I'm just imagining there's like people listening three years from when this is recorded. And so we're going to have to like update that on what all has happened <laughs> recently. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, first of all, I just want to congratulate you massively on the one of the craziest achievements, in my personal opinion, that's ever happened on a hardcore Ironman, which is not only the Zuck Helm, which was months ago, but also the Blood Torva without dying on an account. That, that's yeah. just that's nuts to me. And you're you're the <laughs> second person to complete Blood Torva right right after yeah, Shays completed it. And you were the second yep. person to get a Zuck helmet on the hardcore. Is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. So I'll never be the first in something. I swear, like yeah. always the second. <laughs> <laughs> were you kind? Of, okay, so here's the thing, though. I didn't think, or did you? I don't know if you talked to Shays at all. Like, were you in contact and like knowing that? Okay, Shays is going for this Blood Torva right now. Uh, and did you want to kind of race or something or what? Well. I knew he was gonna like go for it at some point. I, I didn't know it was gonna be that quick, and I uh, I was aware that he was like working on it when he was when he did like one or two kills already or something. So I, at that point I knew, but I also knew at that point that I was not gonna be able to even compete for it. So I kind of mm -hmm. like was like, well, oh well. <laughs> yeah, and it's almost like if he does happen to die, then you have like all the time in the world to practice. You yeah, know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that that was like on my mind a little bit. Like, oh, I mean. It's actually funny because he messaged me like the day before I did my uh, Vardorva skill and he, he literally said like, I hope you die. <laughs> but, like, you know, like a joking way, uh, I guess. But like, he's like, surely you had the same thing. He, he asked me like, surely you had the same thing when I was doing my Blorva, right? And like, well, like the only reason would be that I would be the first one. Like, yep, that's yep. like, I guess the reason why I would like hope that he would die to it, I guess. Like, but I like having competition. So yeah. I don't mind that he got it essentially. <laughs> It's really actually cool that there is a guy, Shays. Or I mean, it was Prey's foot originally, and then, you know, just the worst mistake. How's Prey's foot doing? Do you, are you in contact with him? Ah, uh, yeah, I actually am. Uh, well, last time I checked in with him, or, or he checked in with me, actually, he sent me a screenshot of two hardcore accounts standing at uh, the Gommel guy, uh, both having, like, full crystal with a Bofa and Elite CAs done. So he actually has two hardcores right now that are, like, up oh there and like he's God. trying to i think he's i mean he's probably, he's probably getting gm on both of them i, I would assume <laughs> bruh that is Crazy. nuts i mean yeah. you guys are just built different i swear to god like you guys will do the impossible what is seemingly the impossible and then just restart like from the beginning and do it yeah. again and get further like that's how i see, i've seen your hardcore iron man uh progress just over the year Pretty like your much. journey so, yeah so, i feel yeah yeah go for it so like like my current account is definitely better than my last one, but this account has had access to a lot more content because there was just more content in the game. So like it's it's a weird one because you're kind of always bound to pass your last heart because of new content coming out. And like you'll have access to more stuff, which will make everything else easier. So like part of it is like, yeah, my account is better, but my other account was also sick for the time that it was played in. So it's like, well, You'll you'll pass it no matter what because of new content releasing essentially. Yeah, that's true. But you definitely had some setbacks as well, didn't you? Uh, I remember uh, kind of camping in your stream, and you were saying you felt like you were trapped in the early game for a season. Yeah, How I think was, that's like the, was oh, that. I think I was like a quick question on Twitter as well, like uh, if I've ever burned out. And well, the question, the answer is like pretty much no. The only time I felt burned out is after I died a bunch of times on like early game accounts like and I wasn't I was feeling like I was not getting anywhere I was just constantly dying to like the earlier mid game and I was actually questioning like myself like is hardcore even for me like <laughs> should I be playing a hardcore I, I actually questioned myself for that and now I'm like no nah, I'm definitely a hardcore player you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty much completely decided now you are yeah yeah that, yeah, that must have. That is when I think Hardcore Iron Man is the roughest when people are going through remakes. And in my opinion, like remaking an account, I don't ever do it. I just play one account. But like, mm -hmm. oh my God, like going through all the quests and the low level yeah. agility and just like all oh. the 
garbage. Like, oh my God, you have to do all mm-hmm. that again. It's yeah. Nuts. Yeah. So let's, let, let, let's hear a little bit about your um, Blorva grind in particular. We kind of like re- rewind mm-hmm. the uh, the whole like course of your current account. And uh, so, yeah. So, you, so when exactly did you complete Blood Torva? How many days ago at this point? And how was that whole journey mm-hmm. basically? How, how many hours did, did you practice and everything? Oh, I practiced so much, like, especially compared to, like, Shays. That's like, that's, what I would, that's what I would like to compare it to. Like, I did 100 Awakened Vardorva skills on my alt, and he did, like, four. I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, I, I <laughs> actually, four. Like, oh, how? He's like, yeah, somehow it clicked for me, he said. Like, but I, like, I definitely sense, like, a bit of regret in him saying it. Like, yeah, practicing more is definitely good, and you probably should do it because, like, he, I guess he was a bit reckless in that way. <laughs> Like I'll I'll just do it. <laughs> that is just crazy. Nuts. Only four completions, and you're gonna send it. I mean, I yeah. think a hundred is kind of overkill, in my opinion. But like, still, four is underkill. Mm-hmm. I, I was thinking maybe like twenty yeah. or so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was six days ago, fifth of January. Um, I think. Yeah, that's right. Fifth of January. So almost a week ago now. Um, and yeah, it, it it's kind of crazy because I put a lot of time into it. Um. But if I compare it to like my grandmaster grind, that obviously took a lot longer because there's like so much more to do and like there's KC tasks and stuff like that. But it's like a very, it was a very cool experience in a way because it was very mechanically challenging and perfecting something that's mechanically very challenging is quite a job. And having to do with the nerves of it all like that, that was the main thing for some of the bosses, like dealing with the nerves because like your clicks have to be very accurate and I think that's like the biggest killer. Like you're just being nervous and like your clicks are shaky and then you just misclick something and you just died. And that was my biggest fear during the whole thing. Like just being able to stay calm was like key. Yeah. What what was the what was the hardest of the four awakened bosses that took you like to master? For me it was definitely uh Leviathan. I like I have, I have more Vardorvis kills, but the Vardorvis kills are quite quick compared to Leviathan. So, mm-hmm. and I've definitely done a lot more attempts at Leviathan because Vardorvis I got down pretty quickly. It was more like I had to get everything in my muscle memory and make sure I don't misclick. Um, so I did a lot of them because it's like the most dangerous one. Uh, Leviathan took a lot of attempts for my first kill. Like it took me a long time to finally get one KC, and then when I finally got that. I was still kind of struggling. And like perfecting the end rage was very difficult for me. Yeah, that I mean it's just like okay, well, first of all, when I was doing my Leviathan, I've only had one completion and a lot of deaths yeah. prior, but like I just feel like the hardest part on that fight is just getting that enrage set up really nicely. Just Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like that's the thing that takes the most practice. Also, I never understood, I didn't do it enough and I didn't research it enough to understand. What decides, what determines if it's on, like, if the enrage starts on one corner or the other corner? So it depends where you place the boulders. If you place the boulders on the corner, it like it's like the default spawn. It'll, like, move to its next corner and checks mm. if there is boulders there, essentially. I see. I'm not, I don't know what happens if you put boulders in every corner. <laughs> I have no idea. Then you just skip enrage. You just get the kill. No. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, that that Leviathan was definitely really brutal. So you decided to do that one first. What was? Yeah. Why, why was there? Was there was a well, reason for that. Leviathan was like the first one I was interested in even trying. Like it was kind of like, oh, this one looks funny and, and, and curious and interesting. So like I want to try it on my alt essentially. Without I don't even know if I had the idea of doing Blood Torva yet on my hardcore at that point. Probably not. I just wanted to try it. Um, and it was like the first. Uh, awakened boss that I learned. I think I had like probably like 20 KC in Leviathan without killing any of the others. So at that point, I still had the idea of I'm doing doing one at a time and like I kill one on my hardcore and then move on to the next one. I eventually stepped away from that idea, but that, that's still how I felt about it at that point. And that's kind of why Leviathan got, was my first one because I was in the mindset of like, I'm just going to only do Leviathan until I master it before I move even, before I even kill another one <laughs> on my alt. So that's why Leviathan first. Hindsight, I probably would have been better off killing something else first, but I don't really mind. It was also because of the YouTube, but like I was already like kind of 
advertising to YouTube that I was going to do Leviathan first. It'd be kind of weird if I didn't, don't do Leviathan first. <laughs> yeah. So mm. what 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 made you like, what, what was the point where you felt comfortable enough to send it on the hardcore? Like, was there a point? Was it just like, okay, I'll get this many completions or did something like click where it's like, okay, I can, I can do this now. It was definitely like, it's definitely wait, like waiting for a click and knowing that you're like getting consistent KCs in a row like that. That's like a, big indicator of like okay I, I actually have it down it's not just like i good good got good i got good rng on like a couple of runs or something mm -hmm. like i actually managed to be able to get like four kills in a row or something like that's definitely a sign like okay you know what you're doing now <laughs> and and then it's just like recognizing like maybe i did get, did get lucky on the end rage like i got a lot of like the same attacks in a row if you if you if you're able to do a couple of KCs in a row, you just know that you didn't get lucky. Like you actually know what you're doing. And I was able to get the prayers right at some point. Like that just didn't click for me for a while. Like I was just getting lucky on my prayers. But like eventually you get the rhythm down. You're like you know exactly what the sound cues are and like when to switch your prayers. And at some point it'll just click and you'll just know what you're doing. But You'll definitely, definitely still have like very difficult and rages where it just constantly like jads and like goes to range, mage, range, mage, and you know, it's so difficult to like keep moving and not not far behind. And yeah, being able to perfect that is was really rough. Yeah, that I I can only imagine. I mean, I uh, I, I didn't see your duke kill. Was your duke pretty clean? Do you, do you think? Like how was how was oh, the duke? Oh yeah, my duke was surprisingly like probably my best one. I think. I think if I were to like do an awakened boss again like let's say for cas i have to do it for some reason mm -hmm. i would probably pick duke because that was definitely my cleanest it's i, I, I kind of look at duke like it's like chess you know like like it's just a big mind game of okay where do i go now and what's my next move and if yeah you that's... Just it, if you just have it down you just have it down and it's just that one feels a lot you... more solved it's just like it's l yeah. as long as you know the patterns as long as you fully have those ingrained in your mind and you know the tiles to stand on it just yeah it's like what you said just like a chess game almost. yeah just just perform i even got i even got to a point where you know the eye attack um it can do that during the acid run and really yeah i can do that um so i actually got that on my hardcore as well where i did the eye during the acid run but like i think it was like on the day itself or like the day before that i actually figured out that you can keep the acid cycle going perfectly without taking any damage from both the eye and the acid. And it was a really like, it, it just happened, you know, I was just practicing and I got the eye. I'm like, wait, what if I do this? And then all of a sudden I solved it without taking any damage. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> I just figured it out. <laughs> you can do it. And that was a very cool moment because I've never seen anyone do that before where you get the eye and you just do everything flawlessly without taking any damage. And like, I, I felt really proud in that moment. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> See, like that. Okay, so I'll be honest. I, I just really brute forced my Duke kill. There was actually a point where I was one HP in the kill, and I ended up <laughs> getting it. I was just, I was literally just, just, just panicking the whole entire kill, basically. And then, yeah. of course, your Fang starts hitting zeros, and you're just like, "What the hell? Like, finish this already?" <laughs> but um. That see, I think that when when I look at the Duke fight, when I see people having mastered it, that looks like a fight yeah. that would be really fun to do repeatedly. Um, what are your thoughts yeah. on just like awakened bosses not really being a repeatable thing or not not worth the time? I mean, it takes orbs first off, so mm -hmm. for Iron Man, it's basically impossible to continually do them. But on top of that, it's like it's not even worth your time, really. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I definitely I feel like in a way it's a bit of a waste that you cannot fight them like consistently. Like, it's not really worth doing, right? Like you're saying, like you need an orb and stuff. Um, and it's also not worth in, in terms of time, but in a way, I think it's a bit of a waste that you can't do that because those the fights are really cool and they are quite uh, unique in a way as well because of it. Uh, at the same time, I think it's a good thing that they're like quite exclusive uh, because they are supposed to be like one bosses you kill one time and then never again. Like kind of only weirdos that do it <laughs> multiple times like me. Um, <laughs> So, I don't know, like, in a way, I'd be for it because it's it's very fun to do if you know what you're doing. Um, but at the same time, I think they should kind of stay exclusive. So, yeah. Yeah. It's kind I'm of, a bit of both. Yeah, that's how I feel, sort of. And 
honestly, it kind of reminds me of like the Zuck fight. Like you, you couldn't just repeatedly just go in and kill mm-hmm. Zuck a million times. You got to keep that True. kind of pressure. But with these, it's like, yeah, it's, it's all you're gate kept by those orbs. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of, it, it's just, I'm, I guess I'm just surprised that Jagex went down this route instead of letting it be more of a repeatable thing. De- it can definitely be repeatable, but it's just the drop rates yeah. aren't where they're supposed to be if it was supposed to be like the, the you know, the challenge mode of this. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is interesting that they went down this route. Do you, do you think now that you've completed them, do you think Jagex hit the nail on the head with the challenge of it with how little RNG there is to it? Um, and just like the fairness of the fight in general, like, are, are you satisfied? Yeah, I, th- I think I'm pretty satisfied with it because the time, the amount of times you'd have to do it to like get the correct RNG is quite high. Like you have to do a lot of runs if you want to like get spooned a good run. Um, so I think they did kind of do a very good job with that because you have to know what you're doing to be able to even get a kill in most cases. Like it's very hard to just get lucky. Um, Obviously, if you do, if you do it enough, like I know people that have done like so many, so many attempts, and like eventually you'll get it. But yeah, I mean that's that's a big it's a big barrier, you know. Like you have to spend a lot of money on orbs in that case. Um, so yeah, I think it, I think they did a really good job with it. Really happy with it. Yeah, I'm t- I'm surprised they they literally just released it a few days after the normal yeah. variants. I'm like, you guys yeah. are crazy for that. Like you're not even gonna <laughs> you're not even gonna see like how hard the original ones are for players. It, it, yeah. it. And it was yeah, in my opinion, it was great difficulty. Great fairness, great difficulty. There's nothing you can't there isn't like a way to get fully RNG'd, you know, in the fight. Like there's not yeah. a way where you're just like, okay, you're just blocked at this point from getting Yeah, it. exactly. It's really fair. So let's rewind even further to when you got your Zuck helmet. Because that was mm. just I mean that I mean, I had said when CAs was first released that no hardcore would ever get a Zuck helmet, and now it's happened yeah. three times at least. Yeah, right. It's just sure. is it just three? Is that where we're at? Is there uh, anybody to that's my knowledge hiding is, there? <laughs> it's my, to my knowledge is only three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those, so so three hardcores. Praise vote was the first. You were shortly after, and then Shays. Um, mm-hmm. How was that grind? So you did say just previously it was definitely like a lot longer of a grind, a lot more to do. Was it harder yeah. than Blood Torva? No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, hmm, the only thing that would maybe, I don't know, like hard mode TOB was really scary to do, and that required a lot of organizing and stuff. Um, but I think if you, I don't know, I think in general it was easier for me to do. It just was a long grind, um, and mechanically challenging was definitely Torva. Torva was definitely a lot more mechanically challenging, I would say. What was uh, what? Did you ever have any close calls during your Zuck helmet grind? Oh, plenty. I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was there any chances? That's the real question. Ooh, I chanced on my level five hundred TOA, I believe, on P two. Oh, I think I tanked <laughs> so a skull scary. and then. Uh, all right, all right. I think I, it was a four pattern or something that I. I don't know. I missed my prayer. Got turned off. I remember that, and then I got damaged off prayer. I'm pretty sure. And it was like a chance. I got quite lucky, I think. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think TOA is like the one that holds the most close calls for me. Like before TOA even got released, I was like kind of chilling on my like chances and shit. Like I barely got chance on the account and then TOA got released. And like I basically went to TOA straight away, like on release. Like I think first day I got a completion. Uh, So TOA was quite scary for my account. A lot of close calls there. Even like I think surprisingly enough, mostly in normal modes (laughs) because... Because of how new everything was, there was no metas, and like I was just doing something. I didn't, I didn't really know what to do exactly. Like, no established metas were there yet, and you just did the rooms, and things happened. <laughs> Nowadays, we, you would look at it and like, what were you doing? <laughs> like, why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> like but, it wasn't yeah. totally solved yet. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Dang. So okay. I'm just trying to think. You know, the last task, I believe, was the 10 HP Darok Hydra. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Oh my God, you're a psychopath for <laughs> saving that to last, dude. <laughs> yeah. So that was a little bit like, like I was kind of dreading the task in a way. I knew it was going to be like <laughs> nerve wracking, but at the same time, it's like 
there's probably no better way to get GM. It's like a very easily repeatable task. Like if I like fail, for example, like I can just teleport out and repeat again. Mm -hmm. It's gonna, gonna take no time setting it up. Um, and it carries a lot of hype because I'm a 10 HP or lower, you know, like it's, it's, a, it's a really cool task as a hardcore. So I was like, it makes sense to finish on that task. It carries the most hype. I'll also be finishing my GM if I get it. Um, <laughs> there's a good chance of me dying. So that's also cool. Uh, it was just perfect for me to end on it, I, th I would say, in terms of content creation. Yeah, that was absolutely nuts. How many attempts did you practice, like, on your <laughs> on your alt for that? Oh, um, I would say, like, 80 or something, or 90. Jesus. Like, yeah, <laughs> probably something like that. A lot. Oh, dude, dude I'm just thinking, because, like, when I went for my Zuck helmet, that was one of the tasks I did. I didn't save it to the end, but... I mean, I died yeah. like 12 times. I just like <laughs> yeah. I, I would just run in, you know, just like kind of hope. But seriously, by even mm -hmm. by like the time I was focused, I'd still yeah. die. And so I was like, dude, any hardcore doing this? Like, Jesus. Yeah. Like, that's. I don't know. I would say it's it's a quite like mechanically, it's not very difficult task if you just know how Hydra works. Um, it's just like you're constantly at that HP level that just you just get killed in one mistake if you make a mistake. So that, that's what makes it so scary, of course. But I, I often compare it the alchemical hydra Derek task to like Blorva because in a way, just Blorva felt like the Derek hydra task for me, but challenging, you know, like <laughs> actually mechanically difficult. That's kind of how I felt about some of the, the Blorva fights, like for Darvis, for example. But I would compare it often to the Derek Hydra because it was essentially that because I could just get KO'd in one singular tick if I made a mistake. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, with, uh, so I'm, I was there for your Blood Torva completion. You were at what, like, I want to say like six or 7,000 viewers. Is that right? By the end? Uh, I think so, yeah. I was quite comparable to my grandmaster stream as well okay that's what i was gonna ask what was the what was the oh. more hype stream i guess I, I i think my uh gm stream did better in terms of like the highest viewer count but my average viewer count during the blorva was um a lot better i think because everyone just tuned in for the hardcore run on the um on the hydro task whereas people actually stayed around uh, during the practice runs on the on the blorva streams Mm -hmm. So what, that, I was it was quite interesting, I guess, like knowing how I do the kills and seeing if I make any mistakes or not. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Uh, easy, easy send it. Easy send. Easy send. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> I have an emote now. It's like Mutt's easy send it, and then it's like me with like sunglasses. <laughs> it's, just, I just love that's like a funny memory of it. <laughs> I just love the one where like you you, you like. I think your alt had to tell me out at Vard or something. You're like, things yeah. got way too hectic. Like, easy send it. Just, like, go in now. <laughs> like, you're, you're good. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good shit, good shit. Oh, the chat was something else during my, like, Blorva streams. Like, it was, like, I don't know. People were just, like, oh, I, I like, I love the streams, but I couldn't bear the chat. Like, <laughs> the chat was insane. I was like, yeah. I watched, I watched all of it back. Like, went to the vault and was, like, looking at what people were saying. And it's, like, some ridiculous stuff. I'm like, what? <laughs> The best, the best one, like I was participating in the coffee pauses as well. I just had yeah. a great time. But one of the one of the best ones was just like, bro, you just lost a viewer, man. Like you just lost a viewer for not sending it. <laughs> just like, dude, nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah, let me just like send my account with like, I don't know, over a year of game game in in game playtime, you know, like because you don't wanna keep watching if I don't send it now. Like <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, take my time, man. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So um, let's let's uh, let's think. You've you've accomplished Zuckhelm. You've accomplished Blood Torva. What are you like missing items wise on your account? I swear you have everything. It seems like. Uh, I have almost like best in slot everything. I still need the the rings from DT2. Okay. So I currently have the Bellator ring from Whisperer. I'm currently working on uh, Ultra Ring from Vardarvis. I'm like 1.5k kill count or something. So hopefully that's going to drop soon. Um, so yeah, the other two rings as well. Magus and Venator. I don't know. The Venator doesn't really seem used anywhere, but I'll just get it anyway. Um, and then there is pretty much nothing else if you like, if you would uh, assume that Shadow will be used everywhere. Like, because I, I don't have an arcane, so I don't have the ward upgrade yet. That would be something. 
but if you use a shadow, that's not needed. So yeah. What Other about that? Like I have Max here. What about nightmare stuff? Oh, I have a nightmare stuff, and I have the pet. I was, it's a really weird combo, but uh, <laughs> I haven't really grinded nightmare. I only did nightmare for the CAs. Mm. Um, I do want to do it, but I want to get an imbued heart still, so I don't have that yet. Mm. That's one of the grinds as well, I guess. That's sort of gear, I guess, in a way. Yeah, I also, I mean, I hold, I don't know if you feel this way, I kind of hold this uh, sort of hesitation toward Nightmare because I just feel like at some point they'll make some significant changes to the drop rates yeah. potentially and yeah, the, just the items in general. That's true. What, what do you? Yeah, I feel like. Yeah. Go, mm, go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna ask, like, what, like, what? How do you feel about Nightmare in its current state right now? Like, do you wonder I, yeah. if things should be changed? I would say it's a really fun fight, and I kind of like the, especially with the Fasani's Nightmare. I guess, like, mm -hmm. I think it's really fun to do, uh, and that's kind of why I'm looking forward to it, mostly because of the fight, and it's gonna be pretty exciting. But I think the drop rates are kind of ridiculous. Like, you need to put in a lot of time to get to be even on raid for an item. And let's say you go dry, it's kind of messed up. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's bad that there is items in the game that are, like, really rare, but I, I guess, like, the Nightmare items aren't exactly that great anymore. So it's like, well, do you really want to spend that much time for these items? I don't know. It's a bit, bit of a questionable one, I guess. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I just feel like there is a point. This is kind of how I've thought about drop rates. When there's items that do have use, which personally I think, I mean, I've been saying this since Nightmare release, basically, that mm -hmm. Inquisitor should get a buff for sure. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. like, th I mean, that is the main thing. It just, that needs a little bit of a buff. Maybe the full set guarantees a Warhammer. Maybe the full set has a, diff uh, a higher passive thing. I mean, the fact that wearing the full set is only a 2.5% accuracy and damage <laughs> increase is yeah. just laughable. It's just like, what? Yeah. Like, bro, you, you literally have uh, like, um, you know, uh, like a shadow that does 3x your stuff. And then you have this yeah. thing, which is 2.5% with <laughs> the full three, three armor yeah, set. I'm sure. like, okay. So yeah. I, I just feel like they could definitely make some changes. And at that point, it would be warranted to have some really rare stuff. But even then, the I mean, and mm -hmm. they, they've already made significant buffs to the drop table itself. I mean, back, and on release, for those that don't know, it, it was suggested i mean i guess people calculating it i don't know how they calc it but basically the first week of release people were thinking this grind to green log nightmare was 6500 hours yeah it crazy. was it was unreal <laughs> initially now i mean yeah. I, i'm not exactly sure how long it takes to fully green log i think it's like 7000 fasani's kills or something ridiculous i think that yeah. includes the jar though so yeah but, but still it's that's a crazy amount of hours <laughs> yeah that, i mean we're looking at a thousand plus hours yeah. So, I mean, if they were to just increase the drop rates, I think it's right now it's like a 1 in 160-ish. And if they were to make that to 1 mm -hmm. in 80, like that alone would be so big. And I would be, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm an advocate for that. And I'm, I'm one of those players that has almost completed Nightmare entirely. So, yeah, like, true. you did so much of it. <laughs> Pre-Nightmare, uh, pre-Fasani's even, right? Like, yeah. You did most of it oh, pre -Fasani. yeah. Oh my yeah. god, it was just fucking horrible, <laughs> absolutely horrible. I mean, literally. I mean, back back then with a normal solo nightmare, it would take thirty five hours efficiently to see something. Oh god, yeah. Like, like what is that? <laughs> and then you would see a nightmare staff, and then you know, I got yeah. my tenth nightmare staff. And I'm like, gee, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you go three x rate, and you're looking at over a hundred hours of just nothing. You're just, you're just, yeah, not that's getting crazy. Anything. And. The worst part is, is the loot table is so dog shit that like you're just, <laughs> you're not even making bank while doing it on an iron. You're just losing bank. So yeah, the only the only good thing is like sand few drops, I think. Yeah, and you would Probably. get like five three doses of it. It's like okay, great. Yeah, like, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, not like yeah. A, a twenty noted or anything. No, just yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so that you have nightmare, you have. Oh, wait, so you have a spectral and an Ellie, is that right? Or do you not have a uh, You have an Ellie, right? No, I, uh, my previous hardcore had an oh, Ellie. Yeah, my current okay. one does not. No. Has your current one has a, a spectral. Okay, I see. And how many how many core yeah. kills? Uh like a hundred and let me check. Hundred and fifty or something? Okay. Hundred and sixty five. Very nice. So pretty sprint, yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, it's a spectral. Who who knows? Maybe one yeah. of these days a spectral will finally get. I mean, some sort of. To upgrade. be fair, like when I did my corporal beast, I I did it for the spectral. <laughs> like funnily enough, I was actually going for the spectral because I was gonna do Cerberus mm. uh, very soon. I was like still like quite low level account at that point. So I had like eighty something Slayer. Uh, and then I got a spectrum like, oh, I can do Cerberus now. And then I completed Cerberus in like one task. And like, oh, well, <laughs> man. <laughs> what was your best luck on your current hardcore? And what was your worst luck? Uh, I think my best luck probably CG. I got two enhanced in like 250. Oh, my God. So that was quite good. Um, to be fair, though, like I've, all, all things considered, this is my unluckiest account by far. Like compared to all my other hardcores, this account is really unlucky. Really, um, there's there's a lot of grinds that I've just been miserably unlucky at. Like yeah. what? Um, the, my bundles tacits was like 1.5k. Jesus. Man. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, the be the worst one is the Hydra letter. It took me 3.2k Hydra for what? the Hydra letter. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god! I can't even imagine that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh that was like that was just a crazy grind. I was just like it's not gonna drop and it's funny because one of my other hardcores also went a little bit little bit dry for the letter. It was like that was nuts mutts. Remember okay. that account? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um that's actually a kind of a sad story because it was like one point five or something for the letter, it's not like, nothing that crazy, I guess, compared to this one, but I was going for the letter so I could go back to TOB because I got a scythe and was like, well, I don't want to go back to TOB before I get like full max strength. So I went to Hydra for the letter and then I got the letter and the next day I went back to TOB and I died. So yeah, oh. <laughs> that was quite sad. Well, I DC'd, but I mean. Yeah, still. damn. Damn. So what else? So six, that's over 6x rate, right? For the leather? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, between Jeez. two to seven. That is nuts. Was there anything else that was um, on that level of? Um, Whisperer was quite unlucky. One point two k for the for the vestige. Oof. That was quite a grind as well. That's that's fairly recent. That's really recent. What? Um, yeah, no, go ahead. I guess my rates luck. I mean, my, my TOA luck was interesting. Uh, Twelve rings in a row. In a row, um, really? Like purple wise, like oh twelve my purples. God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Twelve. Uh, so the start of my TOA grind, um, I did like a hundred something normals where I got like, I think one fang or two fangs, uh, a ring and like a Missouri mask. <laughs> so like the worst three items essentially, like pretty much. Um, and then I started doing expert modes, and the first twelve purples of all my expert modes were twelve rings. Oh. And I think I did some research the other day. I had 13 purples by 300 kill count, I think. And there was like 12 rings and a fang. <laughs> oh, that's so, so miserable. Uh, I mean, it, it turned around in the end. Like, my, my log looked so miserable at like 500 kill count. And then it just turned around. I got a shadow. And then the last item was a Missouri buddy, which I went a bit dry for. 454 experts and 200 normals no oh, damn yeah that was my last actually, piece missouri body my, yeah my... i was actually camping on like 400s at the end so like it was not like i was doing like 300s or something mm -hmm. i was actually doing like decent high level raids um i don't know if you saw so obviously when leagues dropped you would see people you know going for their shadows that's pretty much like everybody um there yeah. was and, and there was some people with pretty bad luck i know cox he went like 70 or like maybe 69 or something for his shadow Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw this. I'm going to pull it up on, on the YouTube's end. But Barrow's Bob went 137 purples for his shadow on leagues. <laughs> he literally had, really? he had 52 light bearers, 40 Jeez. fangs, like That's over, th it looks like over 30 Masori pieces, 12 Elodin's Ward, and he finally got his shadow at 137 purples on a fucking temporary game mode. So uh, it was it was past yeah. Christmas and he finally got to play the game. <laughs> oh my that's that's like the main reason why I didn't go mage on the leagues cuz I knew you were going to be dependent on the shadow drop and 
something crazy like that could happen. Like, nah, I'm just going to have fun, do melee. You know, there's yeah. a lot of variety in weapons I can use. it will be fun. That's true. And I'm glad I did. <laughs> Like, I, I just see that. I'm like, oh, my God, man. A hundred. Like, that could happen in the main game. That's the crazy thing. Mm, like, yeah, that, you could you could be that guy that goes 137 purples without a shadow. Yeah. Like, Jesus, that is horrifying to think about. It's, it's the same thing I think about with uh, like a Tebow. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen like we know of like the, the you know, like the typical people we think of Lake going mm -hmm. dry on his Tebow and some others. But yeah. You don't ever see crazy dryness. I'm talking like 6,000 plus solo chambers not having a Tebow yet. Like that shit can yeah. happen. Yeah. That's terrifying. True. That is absolutely. And you you seem to have gotten lucky on your Tebows on your account. How many Tebows have you had huh? on hardcores? Or, or relatively? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Really? Uh, only two Tebows, I think. Oh, really? Uh, I thought you've had like Only four. my current one and my last one had a Tebow. Oh, I've been, okay. I've never been lucky on a Tebow really, um, because I think both my accounts went dry on it. Actually, like this account and my last account, oh, I wow. think I all both both went overrate on it, only slightly, like nothing crazy. Like I only went mm -hmm. like a couple mil points of rate probably, but nothing, nothing too crazy. I think my purple account was still under the amount of the Tebow, but I definitely had more points than the amount of purples I should have had. So like, point wise, I was overrate. Purple wise, I wasn't. Mm. So it was like in between a bit. <laughs> I see. It was pretty much on rate. So on your on on this current account that you have, like, were you camping for a Tebow and you weren't gonna stop until you got it? Pretty much. Uh, when I got it, I was yeah. So I I was gonna go to Nex uh, with a Tebow, I guess. Um, well, that's the idea. Um, I was doing the TOA grind for the Shadow. Um, or for full Missouri, it was either one. Uh, so it actually worked out pretty well. I'm sorry. Uh, so I got the shadow before I got full Missouri, which meant I was going to go to Chambers to get a Tebow. Uh, if I were to get my full Missouri first, I would have not gotten the Tebow and just go straight to next without a Tebow. But I'm glad it happened this way around. So I got the shadow and I was like, okay, I'm leaving TOA behind for now and I'm going to come back when I get a Tebow. So I took nice. a little break from TOA to get the Tebow. It actually was pretty quick. It didn't took that, that long, I think. Maybe like a one or two month break from TOA. How was your next log? Because you have full Torva. What, have you have you green logged that place? What are you missing? Um, I am missing the hilt still and the pit. Okay. But my next log is pretty good. It's like 3k shards or something. Okay, 3.4k shards. Yeah. Nice, nice. I got pretty lucky on the uniques i got four van braces and then the rest is no dupes at all so only the only dupe i have is van braces mm. it's quite nice yeah that is yeah next is next can be pretty brutal i've seen some really disturbing logs i know i just had ron on the cast he went 10k for his oh i remember that yeah yeah for his nile horn just ten thousand shards oh my god that's crazy yeah yeah um actually yeah mm -hmm. go Actually, Shays went uh, quite dry at Next as well. Like, I think he his last account also went dry on the legs. I don't know. I don't know if he ever got it. I have no idea. But um, his current hardcore got it like 4k or something. He finished full tour for like uh, on the US day, I think. So I, I think it combined like was like 17k or something until his legs dropped, which is crazy. <laughs> Sheesh. That's yeah. Disturbing. Yeah, that can be brutal. So uh, what are your like thoughts on, oh, I, I guess I mainly am thinking about, and we've already talked about Nightmare, so I'll ignore that for now, but like Chambers, yeah. do, do you think Chambers is in a good spot? And before I let you answer, I just, I guess I want to paint a broader picture for those listening as well. Like that is like Chambers is raids one and inevitably raids one is not going to be the end game gear for all time and eternity. It's like, we're going to have Raids 4 come out. We're going to have Raids 5 come out. Like, at some point, I don't know how they're going to do it. Maybe they'll have attachments to Ancestral or, you know, some attachment scape kind of thing. But I feel like, and this is my opinion, I feel like the drop rates don't align with TOB and TOA. TOB and TOA seem much more reasonable, whereas Chambers, for some reason, just the items take, you know, significantly longer, like 50% longer, it seems like. Um, yeah. 
what do you think that they should ever make a change with drop rates people think about the economy people think about you know this has always been what it is don't change it but what are your thoughts um i honestly think it's kind of okay like yeah it takes longer but i don't think everything should be the exact same like in terms of time investment um and it does hold some of the best items in the game still like even to this day like ancestral is still like best in slot for mm -hmm. magic and Tebow is still one of the biggest items in the game, still holding an insane value as well. Like it's never really dropped in price significantly. I think it's always been over one bill. Um, so I honestly, like, I think the way to like fix it is the way they already did, and that is like making quality of life changes to chambers. Um, so like the recent update, I would say they've done a really good job, and they've made chambers a lot more like enjoyable in a sense. Because it's just more streamlined. It's it just feels nicer. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's probably the way to fix things, and they kind of did. Although I would say they probably could could have done this a long time ago, but it's better late than never. So I think um, that's that's kind of my opinion on it. I think they should just make it nicer to do, not necessarily make it better drop rate. That's fair. Yeah, I th I'm really glad the the changes that they've made. That's for sure helping. It's encouraging yeah. people to do it more. It just feels nicer. It doesn't feel as clunky. Just, I didn't even realize, but like, because I just hadn't really done any uh, post chambers, uh, like post update chambers, but you can like just reload the raid from the stairs yeah. inside. That's crazy. Oh. That's so nice. So nice. Yeah. So yeah, they've, they've definitely made some good changes. That That is for sure. I mean... I'm one of those players that I I play one account. I don't I'm, I don't really have plans on like making a new account to grind chambers, and I already have all the items. Mm -hmm. So this is coming from a place where I just I almost just feel bad for like, <laughs> I just feel bad for players that could potentially go hella dry on this place that just has obscene drop rates. True. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting, but yeah, I think what they've done so far is good. I guess. In my opinion, I feel like a little bit of a drop increase could be warranted. I don't know how they'd go about it. Um, and it doesn't need to happen immediately. I, I just, my fear is that in the future, when raids four, raids five are out, they're going to keep following the same suit as like TOA, where drop rates are pretty, pretty much in like the 200 ish hour range. And then we're still yeah. years later going to have chambers at some just ridiculous. That's true. Yeah, I guess like they're not really. It's not really in line with like TOA. Like TOA, like if you you crank up the invocation of you, like I'm just gonna see a purple every raid, you know, especially if you do team raids. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, in a way, it's, it's nice because like it it kind of feeds your dopamine. You know, like you're like, oh yeah, purple again. Like, but I don't know. I think it's fine to like work for some items every now and then. Yeah, yeah. What is the current plan now? Now that you've completed Blood Torva have his duck helmet do you feel like i guess this is how i feel if i were in your position mm -hmm. i would be kind of scared to do dangerous content at this point i guess like i guess some of the fear is gone because you've already done like the impossible stuff yeah but you kind of want to keep that like account huh? safe in a way that's how i would feel at least how do you feel in a way like i get that because like i don't know you definitely wouldn't want to lose the account to something that's like inferior to what you've already done i guess so like in that sense, I kind of I kind of feel the same in a way, but I, I I just can't help it. Like I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie in this game. Like I just, I just <laughs> need to do stuff that like I don't know. I need to feel like a heartbeat. You know, I need to need to need to be on edge at all times. I feel like to like enjoy the game and I don't know. Like what what could solve that is another account. Like I could literally make another hardcore and just get another blow over set or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't. I'm not really sure that I have been playing with that thought. I won't lie to like just make this account like immortalized in a way. Um, but I guess my goal with playing RuneScape right now is just establishing the best hardcore ever, and that's kind of what I want to do. I just want to make sure that I solidify my position as a hardcore, I guess, and like make it like a really impressive account. And I still have more to do, you know, to like make it look even cooler so mm -hmm. it's kind of like what i want to do damn and so what 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 are you i guess like dreading the most like are you scared of something that might uh 
Like, um, I'm just, I'm just trying to think. I'm not really dreading anything. Okay. I like, I want to do collection lock stuff as well, which mm. it, that's a bit scary to me because, like, I know there is some stuff out there that, that might take a very long time to like get. Like, I don't know, trouble brewing probably takes a long time. I have no idea. I've never really done that for like the rewards, <laughs> so I'm not sure how long that takes. But that would be an example. Like, I don't know if I would enjoy that or if I want to do that. I see. Recently, I've actually been doing Cazors a lot um, because I needed something to AFK, and the only AFK pet I have left is uh, Heron. So I'm currently fishing anglers as well. But uh, I was like, well, I need something else to AFK because I already have like 20k angler anglerfish anyway, so I have plenty of food. <laughs> and and then I thought, what if I just do Cazors? Like I can make that like the start of my clogging era, and. I was like, why not? It's like 20 minute AFKs every time. So I'm actually almost done with it already. I need like 30 more tickets or something. Very but nice. that'll be like, yeah, that'll be like the start of my clogging. And it's actually kind of crazy because I have like 755 collection log slots right now. And I'm just going to get to that. I haven't really tried to fill my collection log, you know, like that's all from like PVMing and I guess clue scrolls because I went for the bundles cloak and went quite dry on that one. Um, but like that's pretty much going for just account progression in general, not not really for progression in the collection log. So I'll be like I'll be like one k collection logs in no time, I think, if I focus on it. <laughs> just kind of crazy. Yeah, clogging is definitely one of those things that's endless. So yeah, it's like... yeah, it's like scary in a way because like, do I want to do that? Because I'm kind <laughs> of like, I don't know. It's it's not really like necessarily exciting, you know. Like, <laughs> Some of those grinds are just boring, so I'm not sure if I would enjoy it, but we'll see. I definitely want to give it a try. So what are your thoughts on uh, clue scrolls? Do you do wildy clue scrolls on your hardcore? Uh, I do, but a lot of the times when I do clue scrolls, I'm actually streaming, so that makes it a bit more difficult because mm. if I showed a clue on stream and then I'm like, oh, sorry, guys, got a BRB. Like, everyone, everyone's going to know that I'm doing the clue scroll, yeah, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do them sometimes like, on stream even, but it, it has to be like a very easy step where I can just teleport to or something. Yeah. But and, and you have the luxury <laughs> of like bringing out max tank if yeah, you wanted to. Yeah. Just, like, That's really nice. Like, I love that. <laughs> I love that about being a hardcore that I just don't have to care about what I bring because... The, the idea is that I don't die, so <laughs> I just bring max everything. It's really nice not having to care about it. That is really cool. It's just, it, I don't know. Yeah, like your status is worth more than the items themselves. So you just yeah, exactly. <laughs> prepare for the absolute worst. What did you think about yeah. Fuse's death out there? At uh, was it Spindle or Venonatus? Uh, Spindle, yeah. yeah. That was. I mean, like, obviously he wasn't tanking the best, but <laughs> at the same time. Like you're in a, such a stressful situation at that point, it's hard to like keep your head straight and do the right things. And maybe you should have practiced a bit more of like tanking someone, but I don't know. Like I would say, like it's definitely difficult what you have what you have to do in that situation and to be precise with everything. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, so, he definitely he definitely giggled. You know, it's definitely yeah, <laughs> definitely a bit of a bit of a mistake, but. No, and when you're in the heat of the moment, you can't think straight. You can't... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let me ask about you. Do Have you, like, gone out and practiced tanking in the wilderness with a good PKer? Like, is that something you ever do? Um, Not, like, deliberately, no. Not, not like I'm, I'm gearing up in my tank gear or something and trying to tank them. Mm. What I'd do is, like, I would go, like, PKing on my, on my alt, and I would eventually run into other PKers. And I just fight them essentially, and I'd see how what they do when they're fighting, and I kind of like practice that way. And if I'm out of food, I want to make the mistake, the escape. So on my hardcore, I bring freezes as well. So I yeah, do kind smart. of practice it in a way if I need to escape from a fight. So I guess that's my practice. What it's would... definitely yeah, yeah. A bit different, I guess, because like you're, it's not a, it's not a, not a uh, a prey situation, you know. Like on the hardcore, I'm basically a prey i'm not not really fighting back in a sense because mm -hmm. the, the 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 idea is to survive and not to kill your opponent so if i'm on my alt i'm actually trying to kill my opponent as well so it's a bit of a different situation but i mean i don't know depends on the, on the player you're fighting as well some people would actually like 
try to make you not escape and like max distance you and stuff like that. I've not really been in a situation where that's happened to me, but that would be really scary. <laughs> How was your Void Waker grind? And are what are you missing at revs? Or do you um, have all rev things? I have all the weapons. Okay. Um, I'm missing like two of the of the statue things. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I still don't have a single ancient crystal, surprisingly. I don't know how that happened. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I have zero ancient crystals and I'm missing the relic and the medallion. Okay. Uh, I mean, I would like to finish the log, just like green log it, and ideally get four ancient crystals. But I think I'll let that depend on it, whether I um, have the other things left to go, I guess. Like, maybe I'll just get four ancient crystals before I get the relic, for example. That would be perfect. But uh, yeah, we'll see. And I don't want to complete it. And how was your Void Waker grind? Oh, the Void Waker grind was quite stressful in a way. Because <laughs> I don't know. It was it was cool, but um, like constantly being like on your toes, like bro. Even even with the plugin, like you have like the 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 wilderness player alert where it like starts flashing when you see someone. So mm -hmm. I use an alt outside, uh, which is it's kind of needed. Like, if you don't do that, like, you're just going to have to tank TBs. It's not really viable. Yeah. Um, I know some people frown upon the plugin, and I honestly think I honestly think it shouldn't be a thing. I, I use it because it's there and it's allowed, mm -hmm. um, and it's really OP, but I honestly don't think it should be a thing. It's kind of crazy that it's allowed, I think. But, uh, I mean, it's there, so I use it, but... Uh, you still have to be on your toes. Like there's so many situations where like I glance to something else for like a second and someone has logged in and they just go in, you know, it's, it's definitely not a guarantee that you'll get the teleport. Some people are really quick and it's all about the timing. Like if, you, if there's one moment where you're like glancing away for a second and then someone logs in, you can still get attacked. It's definitely not a guarantee that you make it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's just, it's just very, um, how do I say that? Like, consuming in terms of your like your attention like it's very yeah. draining need to be fully draining. focused yeah exactly energy draining yeah that's what i'm looking for thank you so um, it was, yeah, that was quite a grind but you like that kind of stuff right well actually let me ask you do you would you prefer because you like the high adrenaline kind of gameplay do you like it do you like that kind of high adrenaline wilderness aspect on your hardcore or more like pvm side of like blood torva grinding like what? What oh, gets you more riled I'm, up? Like what do you enjoy? I like, I like both a lot. Okay. But I would say like PvP, it's like so unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think I kind of like that, and I'm somewhat comfortable in the wilderness because I, I used to I used to PvP a lot back in the day. I wasn't that great or anything, but I don't know. I'm I'm kind of comfortable in the wilderness for that sake. Like I don't I shouldn't panic that much if I get attacked, and. uh I don't know. It's it's exciting to me. It's quite a quite addictive being in the wilderness. I won't lie. Like especially if you've not done it in a while, and like you start going back into the wilderness, like oh the rush, you know. It's like, <laughs> it's like an addiction in a way. It's like oh more more. <laughs> it actually yeah. is true. I'm I'm actually really impressed with uh, what they did with the wilderness boss rework. I was really I I actually wasn't a fan of them reworking wilderness bosses initially. I really liked how the wilderness bosses already were. How like. You didn't take mm -hmm. any damage if you set them up nicely. And then all you're worried about are just yellow dots or I guess the white dots on your screen. Like that that's what you're yeah. worrying about basically or red dots. Um, yeah. And uh, I was nervous that they were going to add way too many mechanics to the bosses. But no, I think they did a really great job. And like I just grinded out my Void Waker mm -hmm. back in November and like I had a great time for the most yeah. part. Yeah, I think they did a good job of it as well. It's not like overly complicated or anything. Mm -hmm. They're like this quite simple mechanics, but you do mess them up they're quite deadly mm -hmm. um so yeah i think it's also like cool for like pvpers that might want to like dabble into pvm a little bit by like, killing the bosses because they're not overly complicated and they're quite fun to kill i would say yep yep yeah i was surprised that they came out i mean i i have i wasn't super uh like read up on like the original blogs that they were coming out with i didn't even realize that they were coming out with solo variants until they were oh, yeah. out. So, what are your yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Like, are are you um, happy that there are like a like there is a multi and a single version of them? 
yeah, I think it's kind of perfect in a way because like you can choose to either do the multivariant and like risk it all essentially because like there's no teleporting out. Uh, you can get teamed, so and you can you can even kill them in teams, I guess. But especially if like if you're an Iron Man, like even doing them solo is like worth it in some cases, depending on which one you're killing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I think that's a cool dynamic. And uh, what I really like about the single bosses is that it kind of incentivizes you to fight back because there is chip damage in like all of them pretty much, and there is some mechanics that can like really help you kill the opponent. Uh, so it's kind of cool in a way because I've seen a lot of people just like fighting back nowadays at the single boss bosses because they know they can get a kill if they combo it, combo it right with the boss. And I think they get a good job of that because PvP was kind of in a bad spot. I think it still is in a pretty bad spot if I need, if I listen to PK areas, but um, I don't know. I think it's cool that people like take part in PvP a bit more because of it. And it's like a way to get people... Um, more excited for PvP, maybe? I definitely want to go back to Calvarion now that I have a completed Void Waker because, oh my god. Because <laughs> oh, like, yeah. you're killing <laughs> Calvarion in max strength already. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> literally, sure. like, the people that come in are in, like, Mystic Robes and stuff. And, bro, you're in max, like, Torva and, like, with a Void Waker. I, I, I didn't have a Void Waker, obviously, <laughs> when I was grinding it. But nowadays, like, I kind of want to go back and just yeah, yeah, yeah. try to bait getting attacked just so I can try to combo them out for fun. Yeah, yeah make sure you talk as well so they know you're an Iron Man. Yeah. You're like, oh, he's not <laughs> yeah. going to fight that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think they did a good job. I also like that they allowed multivariants to be teamed up by Iron Man. I think that was actually a really nice mm -hmm. thing. One of the one of the yeah. worst things about old wilderness bosses was you attacking them and then not getting the drop for the first kill. Oh yeah, because they're like tagged. Yeah, that was the worst. And, I agree. And and like they wouldn't even have even been attacked. It's just like somebody wearing yeah. a recoil or something and just yeah. got attacked by it. So. Like I remember, like uh, this current account that I'm playing, which used to used to be backup Andy, mm -hmm. and like my first like big grind was killing Venonatus, uh with the MSB with face with a face spot. Mm -hmm. And I remember like I constantly had to like do the kill on my alt first because it was always gonna be tagged. Yeah. So, like every time I did a trip, I was like killing one with my alt first, and then I would go in the hardcore and do, go there because it was always gonna be tagged no matter what. <laughs> it was really annoying. Yeah, always tagged and then always like you can never set it up perfectly your first kill. So you're just taking a yeah. shit ton of damage the first kill just yeah. to get it set up. Yeah, that was brutal. I wh what do you think about in the future um, allowing Corp to be masked and other bosses in the future to be masked by Iron Man? I know that's been a thing that's come up on Reddit and stuff. I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Um. I think for like Corp, I personally wouldn't mind it, but I think it should definitely be worse than like the solo method in a way. Like I don't, I think I don't think it should be like the meta to do it that way, because I don't know, it feels a bit weird. But I think I would, I would, I would be fine with it being a thing, but maybe it's not being very OP or something. Yeah, it's kind of hard. It's hard. It would be hard to not make it OP because it would inevitably yeah. be yeah. OP. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if that would work, but <laughs> yeah. What, what were the other ones you were saying? Like God Wars? Uh, I mean, it really is anything. I mean, I'm I'm just thinking mm. because, like, we play as an Iron Man. It's supposed to be a standalone game yeah. mode, but we have raids already that you could mass with other people. You can team up with other people. Um, yeah. Obviously, the wilderness bosses they deliberately made that decision to make to allow Iron Man to mass it. So I guess I just wonder in the future, like, is that the route that we should go down for Iron Man? Like, mm -hmm. right. Uh, I think it kind of depends. I don't. Mm, I think if the worldy boss, it's like the the variants that were in place were already multi variants essentially. So I feel like that would have to be like a multi boss, and the singles well, variant was more like. Um, an option if you didn't want to go to the multi, I guess. Like, you didn't want to be forced into multi. Um, I personally think that it should only be like that if it's, like, a, a really long fight. So, like, Nightmare, for example, is quite a long fight if you were to do it solo. Mm -hmm. So, it's quite big, and I think it makes sense to be teamed. 
I, I wouldn't say like something in the future like Callisto would really need it need to be teamed. Um, like let's say they they make a boss that is somewhat like Callisto, and that's not in the wilderness. I don't think that should really should really be like teamed as an Iron Man. Mm. I think the wilderness is quite specific, like because well, you're you're supposed to be like be able to get get killed there, you know. Yeah, it's a bit different. Interesting. Okay, uh, I want to hear your thoughts on the new Fortis Coliseum coming out. Is that something mm. you're going to be participating in? Oh, I would imagine so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what, that's like probably you... the next big thing. Next big thing for me, probably. What What are your thoughts when a new piece of content comes? Like when when the Awakened bosses came uh, came out, or I guess Desert Treasure Two in general came out. At what point yeah. do you participate it on your hardcore? Is it just after you get comfortable on a main account? Is it after metas are solved? Like how do you go about that? Uh, usually, once I like do it on my alt like at least once and I feel comfortable like once I know that there's nothing that can like one chop me straight away and and or if I know how to handle it then I know I'll be fine um I don't know like as long as I understand the mechanics of the boss and I know what is like the dangers of the boss like I'm usually fine if, if I know if I can handle it correctly even I, I might not be perfect with everything yet but that's fine like I I don't mind taking that risk essentially because I know I'll be able to teleport out if I need to. Because mm -hmm. that's one thing I would say that's like my be best quality as a hardcore. I know when shit hits the, hits the fan, you know. Yeah. I know when I need to get out. <laughs> yeah. And I know when I'm out of control. Like once I don't know what's happening anymore, I, I know I need to get out. Like <laughs> I need to be in control of the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's that crazy like hardcore instincts you have that people lack. Yeah. I don't think people understand how much... Uh that is required playing a hardcore long term you need to have that muscle memory down to tell you out yeah and also like the i guess the the the, the determination like or what's the word for it what like you 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 just tell yourself to teleport and you don't hesitate like what's the word like um yeah i guess just uh <laughs> i don't know i don't know what the word would be specific word i'm looking for but mm. i don't know I was on stream like not not long ago. I was on stream as well. Like I was looking for this word, and then someone typed and like, "Yes, that's it." Like, <laughs> like I'm missing it now. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll think of it. Maybe yeah. I'll think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Fortis Coliseum is coming out, and it's gonna be endless, endless mm -hmm. waves. So this is really gonna be like, who's yeah. gonna get the most? Uh, what is it called? Glory? Is that the system? I guess. So who's There's gonna... not really like any way of completing it then, right? Like, yeah, I don't think so. I think that's, it's fully that's a endless. Bit of a weird one. Yeah. So who's like it just ends when you die or what? <laughs> uh, I I think at the end of the waves you decide if you want to leave or not. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. So mm. I don't know. That's exciting, but I will see. I'm assuming there will be a way to tell you out. I don't think it's going to be like you have to just stay in here until you die or complete I, the wave. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you do that, by the way? Like content where you can't oh. tell me out? Like, holy shit, that's that's terrible. Maybe that's like a, one of the things you can turn off. I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, true. Oh, dude, that, that'd be crazy. Um, ooh, that's a difficult one because, like, I like being able to like get out if needed. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not sure if I'd be comfortable with that. Like, I'd have to be fully confident with what I'm at, whatever I'm doing, and know I can make it before I make that decision. Yeah, I don't oh. think I don't think they'll ever come out with something that you just can't tell you out of or leave at some point because there's just, I mean, I can see them doing that. Like, like maybe, but I just feel like there's too. I don't know. Like if you accidentally don't bring some, like you forget arrows or mm, some shit, you're just yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> like I'm just doomed at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, true, true. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, maybe not. Could, they, they definitely could do it. That would be. That would be yeah. extremely brutal. You got to make sure everything is going to play. Yeah. Are That'd you gonna? Scary. Are you gonna go uh, hard on Coliseum? Do you think? As long as it's. I mean, I'm assuming when you first start, it's not gonna be super dangerous. You're gonna go through the first few waves, and then you're gonna get to yeah. a point where you get the upgrade you want. And I don't yeah. know. I just. No, I think I'll. Uh, I think I'll enjoy it. I got. I'll definitely be doing it on my alt first. See what's up and shit. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I definitely want to dabble into it and see uh, how far I can get and 
Who knows? Maybe, maybe it'll take my life, but I, I don't know. I think I, I think we're at a point now where I will be very careful doing anything uh, if it's new. Yeah. And I want to make sure, because I think with TOA, I honestly think I kind of rushed it a bit too much, where I wasn't really 100% confident of everything yet. But I still did it anyway. Like I pretty much learned TOA on my hardcore, which is a re- was a really bad idea because I had a lot of close calls because of it. But yeah, it was worth yeah, it in the end. Know. It was worth it in the end. I mean, I didn't die, but <laughs> I had some scary moments for sure. Yeah, I'm excited to see people. I I, I guess the Coliseum is going to be brand new content that really we haven't seen before. Something that's truly endless, and we yeah. have players nowadays. Like Noob Type and Port Cazard and all these yeah. total giga gamers that are gonna be pushing the absolute limits of yeah. what's possible. And I'm just super, super excited to see how far people get, how rewarding the place is as well. Like I, I'm mm-hmm. this is honestly a lot of the time when new new pieces of content come out, like especially new PVM content, I'm always a little bit hesitant on getting immediately involved in it i think uh, part of it is just anxiety like i just i feel like i don't want to really participate until things are a little bit more solved but the Mm -hmm. coliseum i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of really excited and i really want to just day one go hard on it without any guides and really try to solve things myself because even though i'm and i feel like you're you're definitely at a, a a way more of like um or I guess you're incentivized a lot more as a main because you have potential to make a ton of GP where I don't really care oh, about yeah. GP. True. But um, I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm just just really excited about something that's truly endless and mastering a brand new piece of content. I'm also really excited to see people like Scotty and other speedrunners speedrun that shit. That's going to be really exciting as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's going to be really cool. Like just seeing everyone, especially like the big, big names, like, doing their best at like trying to get as far as possible it's, it's gonna be exciting yeah and like if you seeing everything being solved uh i'd like to be able to like be one of those people that like solves things but i don't know if i am i don't know if i'm really like an inventor like i know i can master stuff that's already been uh that's already been like solved essentially mm-hmm. but i mean then again like the the moment i told you earlier about duke like when i just discovered something by by doing it like wait a minute i've never seen this before like like i kind of thought of it myself you know like that makes me think like oh maybe i i am kind of an inventor in a way in, mm-hmm. in a sense maybe i can do it and i think definitely like after doing blorva on my hardcore i think i've improved so much like i didn't know if that was possible but for me to improve even more but i feel like, like so much improvement now like that i've being able to camp awakened bosses on my alt, you know? Like, yeah. That feels very rewarding in a way because I know a lot of people just struggle with it a lot to even get one KC, right? Yep. yep. And the fact that I can camp it consistently without dying, that's like, it's pretty damn, badass. Actually, <laughs> you know, like that feels good. It yeah. feels really good. And you're like, damn, I actually got a lot better at the game. And I, I feel a lot better at the game now as well, like since I've done it. Like, okay, you know, I can do things now. Like, <laughs> like and you just feel like the respect from people as well. You're like, damn, you can actually, you actually, you're actually quite good at this game, you know, like, it's like, oh, yeah, you're right, actually, it's kind of cool, <laughs> like, like it, it feels nice, so, I don't know, maybe, maybe I can, like, think of things on release, and figure out metas, and that would be kind of cool. Yeah, no, I mean, especially just, like, on your alt, just, like, camp it really hard, and like, yeah. really master it at the beginning, that just, that's something I never really do often, and I, I just feel the drive, at least for this new piece of content coming out, that I kind of want to be that person that's on the forefront, like just really yeah, exactly. pushing stuff. I mean, do you remember? I, I don't know what what was your kind of skill level on Inferno release. Do you remember Inferno release? Ooh. Like, like the, uh, I was so dog shit at the game, and I just remember watching people do same. that. Same, like, <laughs> yeah, no, same. <laughs> I didn't think I was able to do that at the time. Like, I was like, oh damn, this is crazy. <laughs> like, definitely not me. At, th- at that point, I think I was like, I think my PVM abilities was like team bandos and like chambers or something like that. I, don't know, I don't think i was any good at the game literally yeah yeah, yeah i mean that i mean what the people that were at the forefront like v the victim you know yeah even zulu was up there lake uh mm-hmm. bodhi all those people i mean obviously wooks like that is yeah. just that's cool that's mm-hmm. cool to be like up there in the, in the beginning days so yeah 
yeah, I'm, like I'm, they had the understanding of the game that like we have now, I guess. Like, yeah, they, they, were they, were, just... they were they were they were so much more ahead at that time. <laughs> totally, and and the thing is, they had the confidence to do it as well because anybody that's starting in the Inferno is gonna suck. I mean, even Wooks wasn't yeah. getting completions initially. Everyone was dying, but that's really the name of the game when new pieces of content drop. It's like just jumping yep. in there, not being scared, and just learning. Yeah, so. totally. But well, I guess the the main thing that gives me anxiety is like streaming on day one because what I want in order to learn fast, you want to have like ten streams open, seeing what everyone's doing yeah. and what the new metas sure. are and stuff. But if if you're the one streaming, it's like God damn it! Like you're probably doing things totally <laughs> wrong, you know? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah what that's you, fair. What do you think the Coliseum's gonna be? Is it gonna be range based? Is it gonna be like tribrid, hybrid, or melee? Like what what do you think it's gonna be? I, I would assume it's gonna be like tribrid. I don't know. That's that's kind of what I'm like vibe I'm getting from it. Like you need like all styles or something. Hmm. Yeah, I think that, I don't know. Colosseum is like a kind of also like a warrior kind of thing, isn't it? Like it gives you the idea of like a warrior, but I don't know. I feel like if it's like wave based, I feel like you'd want to have like something with range, mm -hmm. like being away, being able to like stay away from your opponent or something. Otherwise, you have to be face thinking shit. Like I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll see. Well, when is that supposed to be dropping? Do you know? Uh, it's this year, right? I'm not sure. It's definitely this year. I mean, they released the quest yesterday. I want to say, mm. like the quest that gives you access to Varla more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we don't actually have access yet. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. Well. Sure. When it's gonna be. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so before we move on to some of these Twitter topics, I want to get your thoughts on some of the Project Rebalance stuff that's been proposed. So, mm -hmm. um, Scythe getting an additional, I believe it's 15 accuracy. And yeah, then I believe so. Fang getting rem removing the slash double accuracy bonus. Yeah. And Void Waker potential nerf, Soul Reaper rework. Inquisitor's buff potentially. What are your thoughts on all of that? Are you excited for most of it? Uh, I think I am. Yeah, I think it's about time that the thing is getting looked at, and I think a, a lot of people would agree with me. Like, it's too strong, especially for like slash. I think it's still going to be quite strong and like potentially even too strong still, even like on stab. Um, but it's definitely a step in the right direction because it shouldn't really. Like, I feel like it makes sense that stab, the stab is good, but the slash feels really off. Like, it feels really weird that that's a thing. Yeah. Um, like, even, like, sometimes you want to use it over the scythe, which is crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm really happy with that, to be fair. Especially since I'm almost done with uh, Vardorvers now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't mind. Like, <laughs> Blade of Zelda, I have, I have that as well. So, like, I can use that if needed. And the Cybers is, is going to be buffed at the same time, I believe. I would, I would assume they come out at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't know if the scythe needed the buff to be fair, but because the scythe was already really good, yeah. I do like that they're gonna like uh, change the cost of the scythe, right? So th that's really that's really cool, especially for Iron Man. Um, yeah, that was actually know. the surprising thing because they already came out with Scar Essence, and now they're yeah also reducing. I I yeah. guess yeah, it's fine or whatever. Um, yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with I'm with you. Where like I, I think the scythe's already extremely powerful, and it didn't actually need a buff. But at the end of the day, yeah. it, because they're only touching the accuracy of it, I'm actually kind of yeah. okay with that. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, hitting it's quite, it's quite hitting, a big deal. Yeah. yeah. It, oh, it definitely is. It's a it's a massive upgrade to some. Isn't it like seven percent upgrade on like high defense stuff? That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like really good for high defense stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that actually at least will feel good. I just love actually hitting. It feels good true, to hit. True. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then there's that they're gonna. You don't have a soul reaper axe yet, do you? I'm um, two out of four, so no, not yet. But okay. I I would want to get one. Yeah, the soul reaper axe right now is miserable to use. It's just like. Ugh. Yeah, especially as a hardcore, it's still, like, it's, oh, like, it's not really yeah. nice when you constantly lower your HP. Like it's kind of you know counterproductive. Yeah, like there, there's a few places where it's, I guess, fine once you get used to it. Like using it at Vardorvis, like the one place it's best in slot really is yeah. fine. But like I remember 
I was just going to do a melee task with it, like on Slayer. And mm -hmm. most melee tasks are kind of like a little bit AFK. And yeah. bruh, I swear to God, like the worst part about the axe is the fact that when you stop attacking for a few ticks, you just start yeah. like lowering your charges. Uh, and yeah, and the only way sure. to regain them is to lose eight, eight more HP. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like uh, literally I'm just like AFK in this task and like five minutes later, I'm like at five <laughs> HP. I'm like, what the hell is happening? Like, I'm, I'm just like constant. And, and the thing is you're never like rejuvenating the 40 because you're just trying to camp that five, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, can, you, can you like actually die from it? I no? actually don't know. Oh. I don't know if it allows. <laughs> I actually need to test that. Yeah. Because I would get to 5 HP and I would just like panic. I'd just, you know, <laughs> tell yeah, it out. Fair. Um, yeah, that's a good question, actually. I, I'm not sure if it'll force kill you. I don't think it would. Uh, I don't know, actually. Yeah, maybe like you can't attack. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, That'd be I, weird. I haven't actually tested that. I, that's a really easy thing to test. I just haven't done it yet. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that needs. I. I don't even. I mean, I was talking to Travis Forty Two on the cast about it. It's like mm -hmm. th there's so many things they could do. They could make a full rework of it. I feel like I was watching a Casey stream. He was saying it would just be nice to see a full rework of what mm -hmm. that axe really does. It's cool to have some sort of niche going on. That's important, I think, but. Yeah, like it's just right now. It just feels so awful using. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good point. Maybe they can lower the diff the the damage it does to you. I think that's kind of the approach they are going for. I would say, like the way they wrote it down, it's like it feels too punishing to use or something. That's kind of how they worded it. Um, yeah, they they would I, also. I feel like they're gonna. Yeah, I feel like that is gonna lower the damage it does to you, but I don't know. They they also need to make it so, and I don't know what the effects on PvP are. That's another just thing that's, I mm -hmm. I, I don't envy the Jmon's position to have to like balance these things in PvP. Oh. But like I would love it yeah. if you didn't lower the five. Like as soon as you're out there, if you don't switch weapons, you're camped at a five no matter what. Yeah, I think that's important, mm. but I'm not sure what the what effects that would have because I feel like the only negative effect would be maybe in PvP where you're just kind of like. Camped at a five yeah, like, for somebody. Yeah, exactly. You stack it up beforehand. <laughs> yeah, but even then, I don't think it's like that. Cr I mean, it's maybe. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because you could spec. <laughs> it would be kind of cracked. Yeah, for like rushing, it's like be That's insane. True. That's true. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, kind of deciding that. And then there's Inquisitor's buff. I don't know what they're gonna do. With that I want them to just. What are your thoughts on full ink guaranteeing a Dragon Warhammer spec? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know about guarantee. Maybe like, a, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That, that sounds so that sounds quite good because it, I mean, it actually gives a use for the Inquisitors. I think it'll be all right. I just want yeah. that so bad. I want it to guarantee a hammer already. <laughs> like, bro, I'm sorry. Like places where you're just missing hammers. It's yeah. like, I understand this is an RNG game, but Jesus Christ. Like, yeah. Trying to start off a corp kill and you hit 12. I mean, I, I will literally, even with full max, full max Inquisitors, Dragon Warhammer, yeah. fully potted, max stats, I will still miss mm -hmm. 12 hammers in a row at corp. No, uh, yeah. It's just like, can we, it's Maybe just give it some crazy accuracy or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like almost guaranteed, but not fully. I'm okay with it if it's guaranteed at this point. I don't think it has <laughs> any. I we I was talking to my stream. I've talked to people on the cast. Like, there's no place where it's mm -hmm. genuinely broken at. Like, we yeah. looked through all the bosses. Even in PvP, it's not broken. Mm -hmm. Because you literally have to have full ink for it to guarantee a yeah. hammer. And then people yeah. were like, well, what about, like, low-level peers? I'm like, dude, the hammer already guarantee hits when you have one defense anyway. So, it's like... True, yeah. So, um... Yeah. That that's personally what I want to see, and then mm -hmm. oh, what are your thoughts on Void Waker nerf? Uh, that one I didn't. Out of all the things that were like named in the blog, I was like, really the Void Waker? Like, I don't know. That didn't really feel necessary to me, but I kind of like, I kind of get it in a way as well. Like in terms of like future updates, I think it's quite difficult to balance specs against the Void Waker because the Void Waker is really strong. So in that sense, I get it. But I think in the current meta, I think it's kind of fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. That's but how I feel. I do I do get the argument of like, well, it, it just puts us in a very bad position to like add other spec weapons um, to that make it 
you know, work, make it feel worth using, I guess. So I think that's kind of their reasoning for nerfing it to have other possibilities of special attacks. So, yeah, it's going to be yeah. interesting seeing what they do with it. Uh, because that really seems to be their main, um, I guess, uh, like objection to it is just the fact that it is a guaranteed. I don't think it's the fact that it has mm -hmm. a 50% spec or anything. I think it's mainly just the guaranteed aspect of it, which... Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I guess the the best way to go about that would just be to give it very high accuracy, something like Claws, where it still has a chance of hitting a zero. Like, it, it could potentially just miss... Um, mm. but for the most part, it's going to still do the 50 to 150 damage. Yeah. But I don't know. In my personal opinion, I don't think it, I feel like the majority of the community as well also thinks that it shouldn't get touched. And I think Jagex will listen to the community. So I don't know if it'll actually get altered. Yeah. I definitely think it's the most controversial one that I've like put in the blog. I feel like a lot of people don't agree with the Void Waker being nerfed. Mm -hmm. Right to the rest, at least. Now, if I'm not mistaken, so I didn't even read this blog. I glanced at it, but apparently they were going to come out with something called the... Let me just look up old school's thing. What was that? What, what was that thing called? Like the moon? Like the... That, Perilous moons? Mm. It was... Uh, here, let me, just, let me just pull up the blog real quick. The whole um, Varlamore... Wait. The Blade at Moon, that one? Yeah, that. Did they scrap that? I, I think so. I think there was literally a tweet just now. Yeah, that's what I saw. Why, why can't I see it right now? I just feel but like it's I... still on the blog. I don't, I don't, I'm okay. not sure. <laughs> they said they, they, it was going to be removed, but... Yeah, and that was um... the... Is, was that the Defender thing? The Slash Defender? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like there would have been maybe too much... Um. I don't know that like an idea of an accuracy defender definitely sounds cool. Yeah. But it just definitely, I feel like might have like negative consequences for the game. Like one of the uh, annoying things is just having to like maybe bring a defender switch and shit like that. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I mm -hmm. feel about that. But also when we come out with a slash defender, what's stopping us from coming out with a crush defender and then a stab defender. And then what's the point of even having an yeah. at that point? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Was there anything else on that Varlamore? Because uh, I don't know if you read the blog. Was there anything else that stuck out that was kind of new? I feel like that was the th the main thing that was new. I mean, Besides... you've got the 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 glaive, the glaive of Ralos, like the thrown uh, oh, the yeah, thrown range they... weapon. That's like a dragon armor for range, essentially. We pulled this like up. a defense reduction weapon. So that that was quite interesting. They want to make it a bit better because uh, it would. Uh, deal between zero and fifty percent of your max hit, and that would actually be a lot of zeros. And uh, that's kind of what they said in the blog, so they want to make it slightly better than that. Hmm. And that oh, and the other thing they wanted to do was the whole guardian boots, like change the uh, oh yeah, change the change the, the shields, like the the odium shield uh, and the malediction ward. Yeah, that was weird. What did you What did you think about that? I, mean, I think it's mainly going to have a big effect on PvP, and I'm not sure if they, the PvP community would like that, because that seems quite... Or is it for PvP? I don't know. It's it's a it's an AoE effect, right? It's like a yeah. requel AoE. And that's like, it goes around the player, I guess, like, for Bethry around your player, mm -hmm. I would assume. So, I don't know. I feel like putting it on the wards which in the terms of like pvp situations gonna probably not have a very positive effect on pvp but i'm not sure i'm not full-time pvp or so it just I just, feels a bit weird i just still want it from the guardian boots i uh i just feel mm -hmm. like i i don't know what that would change for the most part having like a permanent recoil going on in your guarding boots but for some reason it just sounds badass like it sounds appropriate on guardian boots i don't know it just sounds weird as hell on a rain shield like what the hell like, yeah yeah it's just very odd especially it's range it's not even like a melee thing like i feel like why would you be having a three by three like recoil True. around you on a range yeah 
it definitely does feel like yeah. a PvP kind of thing they're they're thinking of. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even know why the why it passed in the first place. Like, I'm pretty sure I voted no for it on the Guardian boots as well. It's like, man, this just feels weird. It's odd. <laughs> it's odd. It's yeah. A, a, yeah. It's it's odd, but like at the same time, I'm like, huh. Like I'm just trying to think like where like because I'm just thinking of my stupid grinds, like you know, camping jellies and random shit like that. Like I wonder yeah. if this <laughs> is gonna help. Like <laughs> doing a little yeah. recoil here and there. Yeah. Uh, true. Interesting. Yeah. We'll we'll I mean, see. It, yeah. It it would make. I guess it would make things interesting in a way because it, it feels a lot different to the usual combat but i don't know it just it just it just it sounds really weird maybe it will maybe it'll be different if we get to like play test it or something but yeah i don't know yeah it is weird it is weird for sure um and the fact that it already passed and now they're trying to change it which is true kind of, yeah. kind of odd but yeah i wouldn't be totally against if they just scrapped it at the same time i like the excitement of something that's completely new yeah like, true and the guardian boots are just dog shit so they never get used anyway so like i just feel like yeah but then fair. again <laughs> you might you they might surpass primordials in a lot of situations i don't know if that's yeah. really, like the way to go it's hard probably the case is if it's places where you constantly take damage then i would assume it'll overtake the prims in every scenario <laughs> yeah uh, for real yeah um that's i guess i guess that's a that's a reason to put it on the shields so that doesn't happen Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, but I just, I don't know who the hell is using an ODM and a, I, I guess <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of like PVM, like in PVP yeah. it would be used, but that's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Bladed Moon, it looks like it's getting scrapped, but that was a 59 slash bonus. That would have been nuts. And four yeah, strength. That, yeah. That, it's going to be literally be better than a burning, I think, in pretty much all scenarios. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You're only losing one max hit on in most scenarios. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that seems appropriate to scrap personally. Mm hmm So. Oh, but like maybe like if if they would release it it'd be like zero strength bonus <laughs> or something, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I like thought initially. Yearly for accuracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like it would I, I think their main thing for the bladed moon was to make the sail door just like better. Yeah. Which is yeah. appropriate, but I, I feel like there's other consequences that other negative consequences. Yeah, probably. Probably. Didn't Adicon say like the DDS became like better than claws or something with it? Oh, could very well be. I think Adicon was definitely very vocal about the bladed moon. <laughs> Yeah, I need to. Re I am just out of touch with this whole thing. This is like I need yeah. to study this and, re and watch all those rambles and everything. I want to. I want to hear what people are saying. But yeah, well, I guess we'll just see what happens. Um, they're also thinking of. This isn't really in your vein. You're more of like a PVMer for sure. But I want to hear your kind of thoughts on them reworking like agility and thieving. Do you have? I'm assuming as a hardcore, you have to get a bunch of blood shards. Is that true, or do you not really care uh, too much? Yeah, I mean, I've I've gotten a fair few blood shards in my time. Um, let's see, how many have I done? Like, I think I eight or something, probably. Mm. Oh, nine in total, apparently, according okay. to my log. But I guess mainly for Nex and for Vardorvis. I mean, don't I can't really think of anything else. I've really used Blood Furies. Mm blood getting blood shards is like the most miserable thing to do in this game <laughs> yeah yeah i think it would be nice to make it better for sure because like you're 99 feeding and you're still like feeling like 50 percent 50 of the time or something like like why <laughs> it's so bad i i don't i don't know what they're gonna do with it but like thieving in general i'm sorry it just needs to get it needs some sort of overhaul yeah. and something needs to happen with it it's painful it's actually yeah. painful i agree and then um what are your thoughts on like run getting changed it sounds like they want to do a full rework with how the stamina and the running works and they're obviously uh, already going out of the way to make like energy pools and uh chambers and yeah. slowly kind of devaluing stams is the only real consequence but true um i i'd be all for like making agility a bit more impactful because right now like 
the only reason to get 99 agility is to max them, I would say. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, there's not really anything, like, there's some shortcuts, maybe, like some niche ones, but, like, there's only so so few of them that are actually, like, worth trading your agility for, and I think it would be cool to, like, have your run energy uh, return a lot faster according to your level, so I think they can definitely change something about that. Um, I'm not sure if making, like, stamina potions absolutely, like, not needed anymore is like a good thing, but because I've seen people say like, "Oh, just scrap run energy and like, like completely, like just just don't have it anymore." Just being able to run at all times. I'm not sure if I'd be for that. I don't think I would be, but I think it's definitely good to make it better. Like making sure you can run a lot more, especially like for early game accounts, incentivizing to train agility a bit at the start to make it a lot more bearable to do your quests and stuff like that. Uh, without needing like a uh, without need needing stamina potions, mm -hmm. and that'd be a lot nicer of a game experience for newer players as well. I think that's kind of the approach they they're going for as well. Like they want to make the game nicer for newer players. Um, so that would definitely be a way to do it. It is interesting thinking about because uh, my first impression when I hear people saying to scrap run energy entirely and just give give it unlimited. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I have definitely become a lot more liberal in my like thoughts toward this game about like really yeah. focusing on fun. And yeah, like there really is nothing fun about all of a sudden being forced to walk. Like, it's That's just true. the worst <laughs> feeling. <laughs> it's the yeah. worst. But ultimately, like, yeah, we kind of do have this um, problem where, you know, we've we've relied on it for so long and stamina is having yeah. use and they have high costs and there's a reason to get your agility higher and wear it graceful yeah. and all this stuff. But it is interesting how they're going to go about it. Because, I yeah, I don't think the way is to completely scrap it. But yeah, I also think it is a good thing to drastically increase how much run you have or just... I don't know because yeah, walking around is so painful. It's so painful. Yeah. It's twice as slow. Like if we didn't have a if we didn't have a limitation <laughs> of a tick system and it was you know just maybe like twenty yeah, percent slower, true. that would be one thing. But you're literally barely moving. It's pain. Is painful. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very true. We'll see. We'll see what they do. Okay. Um. Let's take a look at these Twitter topics. The first one I'm looking at is a cold one, asking who would win in a fight: Will Ferrell or Adam Sandler? Assume both are in their prime. Do you know mm. who those? You, you know who both of those are, right? Uh, I had to look up uh, Will Ferrell, <laughs> <Okay>. but <laughs> uh, I I do recognize who he was, but yeah, I didn't know instantly who he was. Um. I don't know. I, 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 I would say Adam Sandler. I don't know. It just looks That's like what I think. Again. I think too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would have said Adam Sandler too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's more like the movies he's played in as well. It's like, he's like always like a bit of a more aggressive dude, maybe. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you just feel like he would win. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I think that too. Um, Eli asks, are you planning on doing any more Wildy content? <laughs> I saw that. Um, yeah, I actually do want to do more wilderness stuff. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I should go into detail. <laughs> Probably not. Just say the date, say the world. Say yeah, exactly. He needs to know. Nah, but, uh, I'm definitely not done in the wilderness yet. Like we spoke about it earlier with like Revenants. Uh, mm -hmm. I do want to green lock that potentially. Maybe even get an obelisk in my house. Um, there's always going to be like clue scrolls that I'll do from time to time. And eventually, and this is like, eventually eventually like really big time late game i guess is like going for all pets that might be a thing that i want to do so how many pets are you at right now 16 sheesh that's pretty high for a hardcore yeah pretty it's good. Quite, quite good and i still have like the easy ones to go as well like um i don't have a chompy chick yet mm -hmm. so that's a free one essentially i'm, I'm basically 17 already and then the i think the soul wars pet is quite quick as well i think do you have Chaos time. Alley? That one's dangerous, uh, I don't, but no. it's definitely easy. Oh, yeah. so. It's really quick. Yeah. And I, I have the I have like max gear for it as well. So would you do the multi like would you do the Chaos Elemental or would you do Fanatic and just be a little bit safer? Um I would definitely do Chaos Elemental because that's like fast. Way fast. I yeah, mean but... I mean maybe I'll do 
fanatic until I get like the, the uniques from there, mm, and then true. go go to the elemental. Like maybe I get lucky, but that might be a play. But I think uh, I think chaos elemental is not that crazy. Like you can lure it to singles. So oh I'll probably yeah! Just do that. Oh yeah! I forgot that you have that method. Yeah, I mean it's still gonna be really scary because you're like in fifty wilderness. So like your only escape really is to freeze your opponent. Um. Or make it to the lever, but that's kind of scary because if it's like a coordinated team, they can like pull the lever yeah. in front of you and shit. So that's kind of scary. For sure. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm quite quite comfortable in the wilderness, I would say. Yeah. Would you so, go for an eternal glory? Ooh. My chat used to meme about that. They like constantly would ask me, when are, are you going for eternal glory and stuff like that. But um, I don't know. Like it just sounds like a big hassle. Like constantly having to uncharge your glories and stuff. That just sounds annoying. But <laughs> uh, maybe, it's maybe kind of, at some a, point, it's I'm a pretty crazy big, enough. it's a pretty big flex, especially yeah, it's for kind a of hardcore. Pointless. Oh, it's, it's it's hella pointless. It's so pointless. It's really, yeah. it's really pointless. But man, if you were rocking with Blood Torva, Zaghelm, Eternal Glory, holy! Fucking giga chat because yeah at your status that at, at the current state you are on your account you going for an yeah. internal glory is nuts because <laughs> because the efficient yeah. way is to just not wear any gear and just go out there with a True. bunch and so True. it'd be significantly longer having to mm -hmm. have a bunch of brews and shit and it's multi like the fucking a like, yeah I'd be so scared like. I would only use the sword in my POH, I think, where no one can see me. Because like, if someone sees me use the teleport, it's like, well, where are you yeah, going? <laughs> yeah. I, I guess. What are you doing? I guess it's relatively safe, though, because you just have an alt there. Um, that's yeah. Scouting it. And then you just have your finger on, the, I mean, just your pointer on the logout button, just yeah. you know, running back to the uh, obelisk or whatever. True. Yeah, that, that would be a crazy flex, though, for sure. I can imagine a YouTube title. Oh my god, that would be <laughs> Dude, so in the, cool. In the thumbnail. That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. It would definitely I'm... be one of my last few things to do, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, my hands don't work is asking, now that you've completed the impossible on a hardcore Iron Man, in your opinion, is there anything in the game, completing the collection log excluded, that you are confident a hardcore will never achieve? Huge congrats, man. Yo, thank you to him. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I actually spent some time thinking about this question, and I was maybe gonna say all pets, but then I was like, oh wait, I'm gonna do that. So I might even get that. So, but that's definitely gonna be difficult to do with the wilderness pets as well. Um, but I think now that the teleport crystal is in the game, a lot of the stuff that seemed to be impossible at the time might actually not be that impossible anymore, because. At some point, like during a pet grind, you were like to DC, of course, right? It, it's like, kind of inevitable that it will happen. Mm -hmm. But now that the teleport crystal has like all these features that can teleport you when you DC, uh, I think it's quite possible to do it now. And I don't know. I think it's very difficult for something to be fully impossible nowadays on a hardcore. Like people have just shown that a lot is possible, and the most unexpected things actually happen. Like GM happened. Blorva happened. Uh, so I think it's quite quite difficult to like predict this because like I, if you say third age, like for, it's not difficult to do close scrolls. So like you can someone can definitely get full third age at some point like, if they really put in the time. It's just like it might take a long time, but happen. It's not necessarily difficult. Mm -hmm. Just takes long. So I don't know. I, I think. Currently, I don't think there's anything I can think of that will never be achieved on a hardcore. Because people have just shown that quite limitless. Like People can do anything almost. The only thing I think is group hardcore. That is when oh, shit yeah. gets hella Are you going to make the statement? <laughs> I've, I've made the statement for sure oh. that no hardcore, no group <laughs> hardcore Iron Man will ever get a Zuck helmet. That is impossible. That is, that is actually I impossible. I think so. I, I don't think that's impossible. It's impossible. Like, cause nah. 
I mean, you're definitely the one to def. I'm, I'm surprised that you're even saying that because you're definitely the one person that could, you know, do that. Like I would, I would say you're the the front runner for being able to do it. But you got to remember, like, all your chambers mm-hmm. is dangerous. Inferno is yeah. dangerous. Six jads is dangerous. Yeah, like every I mean, single thing is dangerous. It's scary, but like. I think if you take the approach that I've like been doing for like my Blorva and stuff and for my Derek Hydra, even even six yards is not gonna be that crazy compared to that. I don't know. That's just me, well, me talking, but then then there is you know getting the the speed run times. But you have mm-hmm. you can't yeah, you have to have another teammate that's, that's just as good as you. Yeah, yeah. And it's you can about getting the right team and yep. the thing and is the you need gear. like Exactly, you need good gear for all of your accounts, which is <sighs> yeah. That's that's the challenging part. You have to like get to that point without even dying, or at least losing minimal lives. I guess it's that's I mean, like yeah, it's quite a grind. You you think because I I believe how it works. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you know exactly either, but it seems like the most efficient way to go about this would maybe be a duo or a trio group hardcore. I think even duo would be the way. I think a trio would be the way because you trio need to do it? fifty hard. You need to do fifty hard mode tubs. I don't think you want to do that in a duo. That sounds okay. miserable. So trios, so, trios probably the way. Yeah, assuming. I would say so. That means you have to do all the two man and three man tasks. You don't. You wouldn't have to do anything higher. But, yeah, correct. Um, oh my god! Like having ah, oh, like they, there's just so much shit to do. Like there's. So many, so much bullshit to do, and you have to do it with your teammates. Yeah. Like, oh my God, what would be the optimal team? Like, you, I mean, I would just put you and Shays in there, guaranteed. <laughs> you, Shays, and Praise Foot, just go for I it. I think that might honestly be the best team, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> potentially. The people that have already gotten uh, Zuck Helmet on a yeah. hardcore. Yeah. I think if, if there was a group that can do it, it's definitely us, because we've already done all the GM tasks as a hardcore. Just like we can't really leech the the team tasks, you know. We have to all be pulling our own weight. Is that ever going to happen? Are you guys ever going to go for that? Is, is there any chance that that happens? That you I've guys definitely at least been, try it. I've definitely been playing with the idea of like going for a group hardcore GM, especially with like the YouTube kind of booming right now, and it would be a really good series. Um, I'm not sure if that if right now is the right time, but yeah, yeah, I've definitely been playing with the idea. Um, to go for that, that would be really, really cool, and quite an achievement. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I would maybe be, at some point. Yeah, I, I would even be. Um, I, I know you can't do it, but it would be kind of cool if you could make a solo group hardcore. Yeah, and just exclude all team tasks and just do it like the the solo stuff. Yeah, um, that would be interesting. But it, no, I mean seriously, I really, I truly don't think it's possible for a group hardcore <laughs> to ever get a Zuck helmet. That is, and and you got to think, there's just going to be more and more and more and more tasks coming out. That's true. Yeah, I think Blorver is going to be on there as well. I want somebody to prove me wrong so bad, but that shit's just <laughs> insane to me. That is so insane. Yeah. Whatever the other I don't things think I'm it... not even thinking of. Like, there, there's got to be some other, like, non-dangerous... Thing. I, I think it really is just, like, infer- all the Inferno tasks. Yeah. That's crazy already. That will be crazy, yeah. For all sure. the Inferno tasks, all the Chambers tasks, not dying. Yeah. All the Six Jad stuff, like that's... <sighs> that shit's crazy, man. I don't know. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's definitely a lot. I don't know. Like, It's definitely not going to be easy to do that. Like, It's yeah. going to require some crazy skill and a really crazy good team. But in theory, um, it's possible. But I would, yeah, I definitely say in theory it's quite possible, but it would be quite a big grind because you need to get all the, all these items for all your teammates. Yeah, um, that's nuts. But I, I definitely don't think it's impossible. Like I think it's definitely very possible. You just need the right players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I I would love to see you go for it with some some teammates. That would be insane. That would be insane. It would be the next crazy thing, I guess. Because everything has already been achieved now on hardcore, so, <laughs> so whatever is impressive now, like we've already done it. 
Yeah. Do you feel that way? Like, so let's just, let's assume, you know, today your hardcore dies. Like what, yeah. what's it, what do you even do? Do you just do it again? Like what, what do I don't you know. make the group hardcore? <laughs> do you like, cause you've yeah, done everything like, now. <laughs> yeah. Like I think potentially like the, the idea would maybe be to start a group hardcore that goes to GM. Um, cause that would be like the next big thing. But at the same time, I'm kind of like itching early game mm. again. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'll we'll see. I, I I don't think I'm like not expecting me to die anytime soon, but yeah, if it were to happen, I can see myself do, do two things: like either make a new hardcore group hardcore, um, or get really good at the game. Because I don't know, going from Blorify made me like realize like, damn, like it's kind of fun, like getting better, you know, like <laughs> just doing stuff yep. that almost no one does. It's like really cool in a way, and makes me feel like, oh, maybe I should like get really good at the game and be one of those guys that you know like like noob type that can do crazy stuff and that's kind of a, a cool thing as well yeah there's always that what do you, so i'm assuming you do that on like on a main account and just yeah really push the limits of your own skill level that would be really cool yeah. that would be fascinating to watch too because yeah exactly Interesting. But you don't have much uh, desire in like collection logging for the most. I mean, besides just building up your main hardcore, but you wouldn't do like the Bodhi route of like doing a main oh, kind of. On a main, probably not. Yeah. I, I, I can't see myself enjoying that. No, I don't know. Like, I, I don't. Recently, I don't really mind playing a main, but it's mostly because I like doing the, the cool stuff, like the, the, the Awakened bosses, you know? Mm -hmm. It's really, really unique content and really cool content and it's really challenging so that's kind of what i've been enjoying a lot lately uh so i'm kind of in a way i'm kind of sad that i'm not doing awakened bosses anymore because it was quite fun to do mm -hmm. but uh yeah I, I, I can't see myself like enjoying like collection logging on my on a, on a main account and it's kind of uh, just feels feels off for me yeah you're doesn't you're really hard doesn't give, heart. yeah exactly what, did you, what were your thoughts on, I think it was on the end of the year survey, a hardcore main mode? Uh, I think it'd be cool. I think there's a lot of flaws with that as a game mode, but I think in general it would be quite interesting because it would have like the same death mechanics as a like group hardcore, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But um, you can alt everything and just... Yeah, like it's it's got to turn into an alt game mode, I would say. Yeah. Everyone's just going to feed the account with money and you're going to just be camping full justy of a dins at all times, probably. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, so I'm not sure if it'd be that cool. It probably depends on how, you go, how you're going to play it. Like you can make it cool as mm -hmm. a content creator, I think. But I think the game mode as itself is not going to be that impressive because well i mean uh, apart from stuff like inferno obviously because mm -hmm. that's going to be really dangerous and uh but i think in general you can just play the leech role and just not die because of that so i think that's going to make it a bit not interesting but eh, i don't i don't see why not i think it can be fun yeah it'd be interesting to see if it got released yeah um Okay, let's see. Oh, this is an interesting one. I'm actually curious on this. Find My Dog asks, do you have any kind of meditation ritual before going <laughs> for the most dangerous challenges? Or how do you get yourself mentally in the zone? Right. So <laughs> I, I guess he's referring to like the Derek Hydra and like the Awakened Kills. Yes, yes. Um, so what I do is I do a lot of practice kills beforehand. That's one thing, just to get the muscle memory set in place, uh, knowing exactly what to do, and practicing like the the bad situations, I guess, like the the, the key moments that could kill my hardcore. So that's one thing, and then obviously when the moment is happening, like you know, it's really nerve wracking, obviously. So, well, I like to like do some really like active breathing, like I like being aware of my breathing and like kind of slowing down myself in a way, like for the breathing. Kind of like a breathing exercise, I guess. Like while I'm doing the content, it's like to calm myself down. Uh, so that's one thing you, you, you probably notice it when I you watch my like kills or something. Like somewhere in the kill, I'm probably like breathing through the nose and like breathing out through my mouth. <laughs> like, like just do like 
it's call my heart probe like because my heart rate like during if i had a heart rate monitor i'd be very curious to what it was at during Vardorfus, but oh, man i could feel it like pounding it was like boop, boop, boop. i could hear it like it's crazy so yeah it's definitely uh i don't know like it's not really meditation but it's like knowing how to calm yourself down is mm -hmm. like really good and for me that's like breathing like focusing on my breathing are you a caffeine drinker yes i drink quite a lot of coffee does that like i don't know i just i wonder if that like puts you more in the zone and certain things like do you do you have like a certain thing or like you have to gotta have your coffee you gotta have like everything going you gotta have that your your uh heat setting in your apartment or whatever at a certain setting i just feel like for me playing a hardcore <laughs> like there'd have to be so many things like going right i'd be like if I was a little bit too cold, I would be, you know, oh. start getting nervous or something. Yeah, I definitely have like I get cold hands sometimes, especially when something is like really dangerous. Like I feel that the cold hands are kind of get me out of my zone. I guess mm -hmm. like definitely ruins things for me a bit. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like I definitely don't need caffeine to like play the game. <laughs> I do get like I've got a certain routine. Like I, in the morning, I always get my coffee, and then like an hour later, I get another one usually. And after dinner, I usually take a cup of coffee as well. But that's depends. Depends if, if I get. I I don't need caffeine to focus. I guess it's it's mm. more like if it's like a it's like more like a morning thing. Like I do kind of need my coffee in the morning, <laughs> otherwise I'm a zombie. But yeah. Okay. I, I would need it to like. Your chemical hydride there or to something like that. yeah 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 <laughs> for me the the caffeine is mainly uh just for streaming i feel like i feel like having being caffeinated when i start a stream feels really good if that feels normal that feels natural if i don't have it then i feel like the energy is yeah. just lower so you have recently trying to well you'll have to tell me exactly when but uh, you've been on that youtube grind lately and that was something yeah. that definitely um I feel like should have been made a lot longer ago because of how much success <laughs> you're seeing on it. But how how has your uh, yeah. YouTube grind been? I want to hear all about it. Yeah, I think hindsight, I kind of regret as well that I didn't start doing YouTube sooner. But I don't know. I never really wanted to do YouTube uh, originally mm. because I just felt like I'd rather stream because I know YouTube would just take a lot more of my time that I could be putting into streaming essentially. Which is true, but I don't know. That's kind of that was kind of my reason. Like I'd rather just stream than make videos about stuff that I've already streamed. <laughs> so like that was my reasoning. But I saw like ten months ago, I think now. I just looked at my YouTube and the road to, the road to Grandmaster start is like my start of YouTube essentially. Um, that was the one video like before that that was like my, my hardcore doing all the wilderness combat achievements. And like the the diary as well um but that was kind of like normal already for me because uh, all my wilderness stuff i would use the youtube for that because i couldn't stream it so it made sense like okay that's gonna go on youtube and the rest is just gonna be streamed so i don't need to make videos about that um so i got the, the big wilderness video did that, that did very well that video did extremely well i think that was kind of like an eye-opener for me i guess like okay maybe i could do youtube if i want to um and then, like ten months, uh, ten months ago, I started the Road to Grandmaster series, which just felt like I just felt like I had to do it, you know, because it was really unique. Um, no one had ever gotten Grandmaster before. Well, I think at that point, maybe Pricewood already had it. I'm not sure. Um, but it, it was just something I wanted to have documented uh, on YouTube, and I was just like, I have to just go for it. I need to do this, and I ended up really liking editing and making videos. So I just kept doing it after Road to Grandmaster finished. I'm like, you know, I am basically announcing that I'll be making like regular progression videos as well. Um, then we've got the Void Waker grind. And ever since then, I, uh, I mean, a lot of my videos have wilderness stuff in it still because I do like putting wilderness stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, I also just started using like actual content from my streams which was kind of scary for me because like, I, I didn't know how it would do because i've already basically shared the content somewhere because so it's already it's not unknown unknown stuff 
I was really scared, like, okay, how is this going to do? Is this going to do well? Is it going to do as well as my wilderness videos? Uh, I was a bit uncertain about that, but people really seem to like it. And one thing I've noticed is that the YouTube audience is completely different to the it Twitch is, audience. It is. So good. it really doesn't matter that I like basically have duplicate content because most of the people on YouTube don't watch my streams, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, I, so that's I think... something I learned. That, that was definitely the most surprising thing when I started YouTube was just understanding. Like, it feels like the people that are on Twitch are the only people that are yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> and then yeah. you realize, no, YouTube is massive. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, legit. Uh, I'm so glad you started. And it seems like your channel's actually, like, just totally booming. Oh, yeah. It's, it's totally booming. It's exciting, huh? It's just, like, a different avenue mm -hmm. of just content, a different avenue of, like, progression in your own, you know, content creation journey. Yep. For sure. Very cool. So what's the what's the plan for uh, the next YouTube stuff? What are you thinking? Now that you've completed Blood um, Torva and everything. So I still need to release the video of me getting Blood Torva. Mm -hmm. That's the next video, hopefully this weekend. So I'm excited for that one. And after that, um, it's going to be finishing the, uh, the DTT bosses and potentially add in some wilderness stuff here and there if I... Uh, I think of something or if I'm doing some wilderness stuff there is definitely still something to do and then the pets. And then after that like it's like it's like gonna be pets and collection logging and I kind of want to like have like a good balance like I don't want to have every video be like collection logging like oh guys I did cast wars <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know like I want to have like a good mix of like pvm and like collection logging now the collection logging part like the the, the boring stuff I can that's the beauty of YouTube, I guess. Like, you can just cut it down to like a very short, short, short section, even though it's like a massive time investment on my end. Um, you can cut it down to a very small segment on YouTube, which is really nice for the viewers. <laughs> Not as much for me, I guess. But yeah, uh, I, I don't think that's going to be like the direction it's going to go. Like, having a bit of collection logging, having a bit of PVMing, pet hunting. And I think that's still going to be really fun and enjoyable. So, very yeah, cool. we'll see. Where, where, that must have, see, this is, somebody was asking, um, was it in some stream? I, I can't remember. I, I think, I've been asked multiple times. So, like, who is the, and it might have been even been in my own stream as well, been asked mm -hmm. a couple times, like, who is the best hardcore Iron Man? And I'm putting you <laughs> on the best hardcore Iron Man, uh, unapologetically. Yeah. And people are like, well, what about Shays? And yeah. the way I see it, and again, this is unfair to Shays, and I'm fully. I'll, I'll acknowledge that fully but the fact that you're a content creator and you have in my opinion a lot more pressure for these things yeah. like for example like blood torva you had thousands of people <laughs> watching and sure. on top of that you already had like shay's already did it so you yeah you have even more pressure just to match it yeah. basically so yeah. you have the pressure to match it you have a bunch of people watching and then you have a a YouTube series that like this is pretty dependent on making a really good YouTube video. Like you kind of got to get this and there's just, there's a lot of pressure riding on it. And I feel like that pressure um, is also what I'm calculating and deciding like uh, yeah. the best hardcore. Also to be fair. And I'm, I guess I'll ask you on this. Like, I don't actually know how progressed Shay's account is. Does he have um, like every PVM item as well? I mean, he is quite, in terms of gear, he's, like, really progressed. Uh, I think he is, like, ve very close to what I have. But, like, his account feels like a, a, a literally, like, a GM rush and Blorva rush account. Because, like, his account is, like, only a year old or something. Wow. Um, so, I mean, heads up to him for, like, progressing so quickly and getting all that stuff in such a short time. But I, I think if you compare, like, I think his collection log is, like, 400 or something <laughs> which is crazy to have so much gear with 400 slots i think that's nuts. um and mine is like 755 so and i've already i've only really done pvm to do that and like i guess some clues i do my, i do do my clues but uh like i did I haven't really grinded collection log yet and so like that kind of puts in the perspective i do think he got lucky in a lot of places mine is next um that's probably why he was able to progress so quickly as well. But mm. also, I probably just placed a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, because and and absolutely by no means is it that big of a margin. But I oh, do I do put yeah. you just slightly above, and I think uh, there's 
just other factors that are unfair in some sense, like the fact yeah, that he's not I mean, a content creator is out of for sure. It's not something really control. I mean, I, I guess it is I controllable, but not really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like people people might pick his side because it's like, well, he's done it the first, and honestly, that's really sick. Like, it's really cool to be the first in something. Mm -hmm. I can't really Im imagine because I'm never, never the first in something. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like people mostly roll for the underdog sometimes because it's like you just you just carry so much more hype as a content creator. So you're it's always going to be all the people are just going to be for you in favor of you because that's the person they know and that's yeah. they have a face that can put to the to the account and the, you hear most about them. And whenever Shays was mentioned, it was like, who? Like, like yeah. people didn't know about Shays. <laughs> like, who, yeah. who is this guy? And he, he just suddenly pops up and he's a grandmaster. And and he's like, oh, I get Blorva too. Like, wait, huh? Wait, does he make videos? Like, like it, it, it makes sense that people are going to like pick me, I, I guess. But I mean, I, I've, I've basically said before I got Blorva, I literally put Shays above me. It's like, yeah, he got the achievement done. You know, I, did, I don't have it yet, so mm -hmm. his account is more impressive than mine. Like, I, I fully admitted that as well. Like, his account is just better now. Until I get it, then I can maybe, like, start comparing again, you know? Yep, yep. Um, so, it feels weird, like, saying, like, okay, I think my account is better, but... Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I, I personally put it there. And when you're looking at, because obviously there's a difference. I mean, even when... You know, before Blood Torva and all this, um, yeah. You know, I was putting your account on the top, and people would be like, "Well, what about Exact?" And then, you know, then mm. we're comparing different things because when people think yeah. of Exact, they think of all the crazy shit he's done: level three yeah. Fire Cape, level forty Inferno oh, yeah. Cape. Like, don't get me wrong; like, I will put Exact over you as a mechanical player. Yeah. Obviously, I feel like anybody would do that. that no disrespect sure. to you whatsoever, but <laughs> no. it's just. We're comparing different things. So when I think of it, a hardcore though, Exact limited yeah. himself so drastically that it's we're not even comparing the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. His hardcore I, was still insane, and he was still a yes. phenomenal hardcore player for sure. But like, like I think like Exact was in his own league. I, I'm, yeah. I'll just say that like he was literally in his own league, and I think if we compare the hardcores, it's it's unfair in a way because he was a one defense account, which just mm -hmm. doesn't have access to all the content and stuff like that. Um, either way, like the, I think his account is more impressive in a sense because he did it all in one defense. It's more like the, I guess the way he played the account is like more impressive because he did all that stuff with one defense and he did all the hard mode TOBs. Crazy. And like with like the way it's supposed to be done i guess like solving it completely with the green ball like pog tanking and passing the ball and like everything like i just feel like that's extremely impressive and there's probably not going to be anyone that's going to do that uh again i, I don't know <laughs> maybe there will be but he did some crazy stuff on that account so i think the way he played that account and the, the way he did everything is definitely way more impressive than me but in terms of the account in general i mean I think mostly objectively you could say this account will be better because it just has more access to everything and has all the gear and everything. Yep. So. Yep. So how how does it how does it feel by the way to uh, have gone through all the remakes and all that shit and you can finally <laughs> you could finally yeah. say you've triumphed and gotten all the I mean because really at this point in the game and of course <laughs> things continually progress and we're, there's gonna be more and more but having a Zuck helmet and having Blood Torva is fucking insane. Do you ever like actually think about that like you actually did it? Oh, plenty of <laughs> times. Yeah, it's like whoa, like I have it. You know, like, I've achieved my my biggest goals. You know, it's it does feel really nice and rewarding and a big relief as well like that's probably how i would describe it like just a massive weight off my shoulders like whenever i got gm that was the, that was the case um but also like getting blorva done i just I, I knew when i went into the grind there was a pretty fair chance that i would actually die because like the danger is is there like you know mm -hmm. at every one of those bosses like at any point you can kind of die if you make the mistakes so, just a ma mainly a massive relief. That's the way, the best way I could describe it. Yep. Okay. Uh, DKU asks if you could push 
through one particular push through one particular update for the game what would it be could be anything oh um hmm um i would like to see something hmm like a like a boss or something oh i guess that's we already have that but like Something that you really have to like try, but I guess Arkar is a good example, but I like something where you like actively have to switch between styles and like, I don't know what it would be exactly, but I think something like that is really cool because a lot of the bosses in the game, they're like, okay, you use one style and that's like, that's it. Um, or two, maybe. There is very little, you know, a little amount of bosses where you like do everything mm -hmm. like at the same time. Like at, at all, for example, there's like, you need to use a certain attack style on a certain hand, and then like after that, you just go back to whatever style you were using, uh, so like mage hand, melee hand. But like it's not like constant switching between your attack styles. Yeah, I feel like I the guess only other I boss guess... is like Nilo, maybe. Like yeah, Nilo, Nilo yeah, exactly. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like the the click intensity of like having to switch constantly. I feel like that ups the skill level of of the the boss you're doing a lot. Because you have to like keep in mind like your prayers, you have to keep in mind maybe your positioning. Like uh, I guess like Nilo hard mode, is, like a good example. Like you have to pay attention to so many things. You have to keep aware. Like you need to make sure you move in the correct way so you don't kill your teammates and stuff. Mm -hmm. You also have to make sure you're attacking the, the right style, praying the right thing. There's a lot going on. But, like something like that would be really cool to have more in the game. I don't. I couldn't think of anything specific though. <laughs> Yeah, I what, um What about you? What about you? What do you, what would you do? Like is there something you want to push? Yeah, I mean there's tons of things I want to push. <laughs> <laughs> and I have pushed, but um your agenda. <laughs> yeah, there there's definitely like okay, so one of the things I would love to see is and I've talked about this for a couple of years now is something like Sepulcher that's like Yeah. I, have you ever mm. watched the cartoon Aladdin? No. Okay, well there's there's the scene where Aladdin goes in the cave of wonders and it's like this thing in the desert. He goes in there and he has to, you know, retrieve the lamp and get out. Um, and then, you know, he has the genie lamp or whatever, but in this, yeah. it would be, it would be, so you're in the desert, there's a new cave of wonders kind of thing. And every so often, like every 10 minutes or so, another game starts or, or every five minutes or something on certain worlds, another game starts. So it's this thing that you mass sort of like you go in with other players and the objective is is to go down there and you have like intense floor five esque esque sort of like uh, obstacles like sepulcher ish kind of things where you're going down this thing. There's boulders falling. There's flame walls. There's all this shit going on, and you're running yeah. in all at the same time. So it's not this continual thing. It's like the game the the round starts and you a hundred of you run in, and yeah. nobody's affecting your gameplay. So you could entity hide if you want. But if you weren't entity hiding, you'd just be seeing people, people drop like flies, basically getting stomped and all this stuff. And yeah. the objective is it, of it is to run all the way, retrieve the lamp, and then exit mm. as well in time. Yeah. And mm. um, you do have a significant amount of time. So what you could also do is if you're really good at it, you could loot urns on the side. And the urns would actually be very valuable. Um, but it would right. be you know high risk, high reward doing it in time. And then when you leave, yeah. you have the lamp and you could use it on agility XP or thieving XP or whatever it would be, mm. basically. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think part of the reason I want something like that is because I think we have untapped potential with Sepulchre. I think Sepulchre right now is like really great piece, a really great piece of content, but it could be yeah. something where it's high intensity the entire way through. Yeah. And multiplayer where it's really competitive. Like it, it's fun to see who's going to be the first one out. Who's going to, you Wait, know, like would, uh, would it affect others? Like if someone else finishes before you or what? No. So it wouldn't have any effect. It would just basically be to flex. Like who, who's okay. <laughs> who, who's, who's the giga chat here? You know, like who, who's the one that's right. not fucking fucking up at all. Who's the one taking all the risks, trying to get that extra tick on the flame wall and yeah, all this stuff. And everything's really fair. Um, yeah. that ultimately there's no real RNG aspect. As soon as you've mastered this, you've really mastered it, but it's very tough. And uh, yeah. I, I just feel like something like a PVM challenge that's more on the agility side gets me really excited because there's so much untapped potential with uh, oh. movement in this game. I agree, yeah. I think like movement in this game is really unique. 
in a sense, like the, the tick system and everything. And I think it has a lot of potential to make some cool stuff. Well, like Sepulcher already proved like it's quite cool. Uh, it's actually made agility fun for me. So like, that's uh, that's one thing. That's that's a massive achievement. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think I agree. Like something like that would be really sick. And uh, the other, th uh, there's so much like as I said, untapped potential where like you know there could be a a hallway where you're running through. You have to dodge all the flames. But on top of that, now you have range monkeys and mage monkeys on the top of the towers similar to like the monkey madness area apatol yeah it's something like that where you have these things where you now you have to start praying as well and doing it but it's right. fair it's it's calculated it's not, nothing's gonna rng you it's just yeah there's just so much more going on now and um i think the other yeah. important thing i don't know how you feel about this i, I feel particular particular about this kind of like static nature of things where where you master a piece of content, where things are very static. Um, there is yeah. a little bit, I, I like some some of the time in some pieces of content, I think it is valuable to have an RNG sort of dynamic layout. But yeah. I think part of the charm of RuneScape part is like absolutely mastering a piece of content that's really static and you just got yeah. the muscle memory down. Yeah. So I feel like that um, would be... I don't know. It de it depends though, because if you want something really challenging, it must be dynamic. Exactly. Like yeah. Like it kind of has to be dynamic if it wants to be if you want it to be really challenging. And I think I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I feel like it would make make it less fun if it's like fully static, because mm -hmm. like you just do the exact same thing all over again. You don't even have to worry about which kind of set it is or something. Or like I think that might make it a lot less fun to do, but. Yeah, maybe it depends on how maybe it depends on how difficult it is. If it's like actually really really difficult, then maybe it can work. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be absolutely fully static. I think there's some things where you know maybe I, I think the static nature is really um, what I mean by okay. I, I guess this is what I mean more by static. Like there's some aspects of it that are dynamic, but it's like starting a sepulcher floor where yeah. you know the flames are going to be on a certain cycle instantly. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the important static nature of it. So you're not just hella confused. Like, okay, I have to literally every single time look at the pattern, new patterns of flames. But there still are dynamic features of it where, you know, maybe things are praying mm -hmm. differently. I think that's the fine balance. But I don't, what I don't want is you to run in and have to like really use your brain to realize what the hell is going on here. I think yeah, it's yeah, important yeah. to have some sort of static. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, let's see. Ev Meister asks, if you were playing on a normie account, what kind of content mm. do you imagine yourself creating? He has a right. couple other questions as well, but yeah, first one. I think we got it into this a little bit. Like, I'd probably try to get really good at the game. So I'd imagine it'd be like solo tobbed and stuff like that. Um, trying to do things that almost no one can do and trying to improve my skill at the game to a level that like really puts me in like a top spot if if people would, like i would i would like to be that guy that you know would be mentioned if someone would ask you well, who is the best player in the game you know mm -hmm. like i would like to be in that list I would, I would aspire to be in that list i would definitely don't think i would be in that list right now I mean, some people might want to say it but i would highly did highly disagree with it because like I'm a good hardcore player, I'm not necessarily a really good player in general. Like I definitely have a certain basis of this game, um, but I definitely would not be able to compete with like the absolute legends right now that are like at the top. Mm -hmm. But I would like like that's probably what I would like to, you know, do. I would, I would like to get better at it and actually be do actually do be one of those people. That's probably what I would do on a normie. Um, funniest death you've experienced across all of your accounts. None of them were funny to you, Ooh. though, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, if we're talking about my hardcore deaths, yeah, then yeah. Uh, I would say the funniest one was either the hand member or the guard dog. <laughs> That's probably... The guard yeah. dog, in my opinion, is the funniest. Yeah, I think it was, I mean, it was foe, I believe who um, was in my chat and he like asked me like a question 
about like my previous hardcore or something. And as I was like answering it, I was like dying. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like I looked at the screen like, oh, and then I finished my sentence like my previous, previous hardcore. <laughs> that was like such a funny moment. So painful. Oh, it was like the perfect timing. But yeah, what what sucked about that though? Like it was like a, a double-edged sword in a way because like people remembered me for dying to the guard dog. Like that's what I was known for back then. Yep. And and it completely disregarded my other hardcore, like that DC and TIB, which was like one of the better, maybe one of the best hardcores at the time, but that progressed very quickly as well. Mm-hmm. So like that kind of sucked. It's like <laughs> I kind of felt like it wasn't appreciated anymore I after I died. It's to like the oh, guard it was a dog. fluke. This guy's a fluke. Yeah. Like, he does. Yeah. yeah. Like this guy uh, dies to a guard dog. What a, what a loser, you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. But yeah, I think that's the, and I think the the ham member, which is like pure like disbelief, like it's like wait, I just died to a ham member, like what am I doing? <laughs> like, I think that's kind of when I like had like a little like burnout. I think I think that might have been the moment. I'm not sure. Yeah, like that's not yeah. gonna feel great. Just yeah. Okay. Uh, what what kind of hardcore iron man hazards do you anticipate with the release of the sailing skill Ooh, i don't know like i i would assume i would assume that they might make some parts of it dangerous because like that's like pvm encounters i think um i honestly don't think it's going to be that crazy on release i think on release it's going to be quite okay for the average hardcore um but I definitely can see some future updates around sailing because, like, sailing might be like a requirement for certain PVM bosses and stuff. So I can definitely see them adding something like really big time for sailing, and it's like actually going to be proper challenging. But I have no idea what that would be, like some kind of kraken or something. <laughs> but I, f- I can definitely see dangers with sailing, but. I'm not sure if they've really decided on the approach with sailing. Whether they would like make the actual training of the skill dangerous. I don't know. It would be interesting if that's the case. So at this point, do you think Jagex should go down the route of like things like almost every new piece of content being dangerous for hardcores? Obviously in the early oh. days they made chambers like not dangerous and other things. Yeah. Like Inferno. Oh, I definitely but... I think they've already kind of decided that everything is gonna be dangerous from now on. Because mm-hmm. like that's definitely the trend we've been seeing lately. Yeah. Every piece of content they've been releasing is dangerous. So I think they originally also regretted that Chambers is now like not dangerous. Yeah. So yeah. I, def- I think they've definitely learned from from that where they are just not going to add anything that's not dangerous anymore. Or it'd have to, it would have to be, have a really good reason for, not, for it not to be dangerous, but I doubt there's going to be anything. Um. Bayless Mango is asking, if Jagex released a hardcore mode with no safe deaths, would you prefer to play that or hardcore as it currently stands? Do you think everybody would... It's so hard. Like, Do you even think that would happen? Is there even a chance that Jagex Um, would do something like that? I definitely think it could happen that they make like a fully new game mode that has like dangerous deaths everywhere. Because it wouldn't be any work for them, basically, because they already have the system in place with group hardcores, right? So... Mm -hmm. They can just basically copy paste that for another game mode to make it one life. Um, uh, if I would play it, probably if I were to make a new hardcore, I'd probably make that instead of a like the regular hardcore right now because it's just more exciting. At the same time, like yeah, it ma- it makes no sense that James is not a safe death, I guess, or that it is a safe death. Sorry. Um, at the same time, it's kind of nice, you know. It's kind of nice that you have content that you don't have to care about dying, because like you already have a lot of stress usually when you do PVM. Like you're I'm basically always like on edge when I do PVM. Now I do like that, but um, it, it's nice to be able to hot chambers with your friends that are not necessarily like that amazing at the game or don't have the best gear or you know just have some fun like without caring about you know, your status at all. Um, so it's nice that there is content that allows that, that you don't always have to be um, on the edge of your seat, making sure you don't die. So at the same time, it's nice, but 
it would be a lot cooler if everything was dangerous. As it is a hardcore game mode, if <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, it's uh it would be it, uh, it just it would just be odd if they did do that because then if you're a normal hardcore, it's like what are you doing? Yeah. It's, like, it's like yeah, you're you're kinda lame, you know, you, yeah. you play a normal hardcore <laughs> yeah. That's true. So maybe maybe it's better in, in my better interest to for them not to release the game mode. Because then yeah. I have a sick account at all times. <laughs> and, yeah. I think that's probably the way. And I don't think they'll ever touch it, to be honest. Yeah. We'll see. Um, okay, this is an interesting question. Would you... This has come from Slice of Mayo. Would you still be playing OSRs if Hardcore Iron Man was never added? Hmm. I and think I would, would be playing... And what would you be doing? Just main man, just kind of like trying to improve, I guess. That's what I'm imagining. Probably. I don't know. It's kind of weird because... So before I made a hardcore, I was uh, I was only starting PVM like very, very shortly. I didn't PVM for long, essentially, maybe like a year. I was always PKing, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, so maybe I would still be PKing, probably. I probably would not get into content creation as well. <laughs> so if hardcore was not a thing, I'd probably never have started streaming or YouTube. So. That is also one thing. You probably would have never heard of me. Um, so yeah, I would imagine I'd be like doing both PVM and PVP, but I'm not sure. Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, interesting to think about. I mean, I that is the reason I got into Iron Man mode was hardcore Iron Man release. I, would, I don't think I ever would yeah. have really gotten into Iron Man mode if it oh, weren't for it. Same. Same. I, I I didn't get why people made an Iron Man. Yeah. I, yeah. It's like why why would you do that? Like, bro, <laughs> why why you have to fish your own food when you can just buy it from the GE? Like, dude, that makes no sense. Why would you play that game mode? <laughs> I, I I think I did have a little bit of a desire to do it. I just remember thinking like, oh my god, like you can't go to the Grand Exchange to complete quests. Like you have to <laughs> yeah. you have to go get all the items manually. Like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like hell no. But now that I play an Iron Man, I'm like. Yeah, kind of hard for me to play a main now. I feel like that would be, like, yeah. it would be comfy, but it's just like I, I, I feel like playing a main is just, especially if you play like me, where I wouldn't be just super focused on. Like, I think I'd be like a clogger almost. I, I think yeah. I'd have to almost, but like if you if for for the average player that plays a main, like it's you're playing a GP game, like just yep. what's gonna get you GP, and I feel like that limits you so. Like, it has the potential to limit how you play, like, drastically. For sure. Like, you could just stick to one boss and yeah. like only do that boss and then have all the gear you want. <laughs> and it's that might so... be fun, but I don't know. That doesn't really sound yeah. fun to me. Yeah, same, same. It's interesting. Um, the, the One of the annoying things, and for most players, like, I'm a giga nerd, so I just love Iron Man mode. I love all the, the crap that we have to deal with, all the chores. I mean, obviously, yeah. I want to make chores less tedious, and I feel like there's always quality of life to be made for that. But there's definitely, you know, when people talk about Mithril Man mode and things like that, or, or Bronze Man mode, and that mm -hmm. one's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. of being an Iron Man but still enjoying the luxuries of being able to buy yeah. supplies and other things sounds like a nice little balance. Yeah. Would I can you, get that. Would you play that? Bronze, bronze mode? mode? Yeah, if that came out. Uh, I think it could be fun for content creation. I think the game mode itself would be very pointless, but <laughs> because everyone would just like boost it essentially. Like the game mode itself would be kind of pointless. Like just the way you play it would be cool. But yeah, like people would just kill themselves on all, you know, and then get all the gear. <laughs> it's oh like, well. yeah. So that that would have to be oh yeah, that's something that's brought up. So bronze man mode, a lot of people think of like frames series where you can yeah. literally just oh, PK it's stuff. Not. So it would they, they could do that. But yeah. in my opinion, when I think of a pure kind of bronze man mode, it really is about you you can buy anything on the grand exchange that you've obtained oh. um from right. like the actual source so right. if, if you've made a brew before you can now buy unlimited of them if you've uh, made a super store you can buy unlimited of them. but peking peking is excluded 
Actually. Yeah, it would have to. Like, uh, I'm. Okay. It would. It would have to to be the pure mode. If they wanted to include that, then yeah, you're just gonna break the mode instantaneously because you're just yeah. fucking PK a guy with max <laughs> okay. and you're good. Yeah. So when I think of bronze uh, mode, I think of a more an okay. Iron Man aspect where as soon as you've gotten the item legitimately, then you can buy unlimited of them, including armor and stuff. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. That might be fun. Because then there is like still the aspect of like you have to unlock the item and get the item, but. There's also like, okay, if I get this item, I can still sell it and buy yep. something else. <laughs> yeah, that you've already obtained as well. And, yeah, and exactly. the best yeah. thing is just there's no chores. You can buy unlimited blood shards as soon as you've obtained one. You can buy all your potions, buy yeah. all your food, buy all your shit. That's yeah. what people deep down want. It does become convoluted. True. I definitely agree with people that have that fear of like coming out with just random game modes just to you mm -hmm. know, clutter the high scores and stuff like that. But ultimately, yeah. I'm like, ugh. Who cares? If people want it, just give it to them. I wouldn't play it personally, but I, I would definitely... I think it would... In my opinion, it would be a, a kind of like a selfish thing to have just so Iron Man stays a little bit pure just because there now is a Bronze Man mode where you're not going to mm -hmm. taint the uh, default Iron Man mode. You have the kind of like casual Iron Man mode. I guess we already have group yeah. Iron Man for that in a way. Like that is the casual Iron Man mode kind of. I'll yeah, it's already group. a bit of a stepping stone. Yeah. yeah. True. I want, um, so you did that end of the year survey or you at least kind of know what they were yeah. talking about on it. Um, what are your thoughts on like official niche modes? Um, I think in most cases they should just remain very niche and just be played personally, like, like without an official game mode for it. I, mm. I just, I don't know. I think it. There shouldn't be a game mode for everything. Uh, if you want to play the game in a certain way, just do it. Like you don't you don't need a game mode for it. Um, I think that's the beauty of this game. Like you can play it however you want, and it doesn't necessarily have to be official. And I think that I, I think it would just, especially if you, if you look at it from like a a new player perspective, the fact that there's like. 10 game modes to choose from is like what <laughs> why, <laughs> why do true. i have all these <laughs> why do i have all these options <laughs> uh this is, is weird true. that is true yeah i don't know i think since they're already quite niche i think this should just remain niche i don't think we need official game modes for it that's fair okay let's see um Okay, here's actually Big DXL is asking top three hardcore Iron Man alive. Other than oh, alive, alive. Uh, he's he also puts in parentheses of or or all time. Other than okay. yours, I um, will. I will name the all time first. <laughs> okay, okay, and then we'll do a okay. live after. Yeah. Um, I think exact is going to be on there. Uh, Oyster Kalja and Price Food. Those would be my top three. Um, if yeah, I think that's I'm quite confident with that. I don't okay. think there's anyone that's gonna be in that list. And alive, um, alive. Oh, uh, hmm. Chase definitely like yep. that's yep. guaranteed. Um, probably Soy Duro. It's like uh, he's not he's not he has changed the name actually. He's not Duro, but uh, mm -hmm. also known as Soy Duro. Probably on there as well. Um, ooh. I don't know about a third of life. Hmm. I'm not really sure. A little bit out of the loop on uh, who is currently like a big dog. Um, I mean, those are definitely the two that I could guarantee because I know Sojuro is going to go for, for uh, Grandmaster as well. Mm. Um. I think fairly soon. Um, he's just waiting for his shadow, I believe. And then Chase obviously already has the GM and the Blorva. I, I'm not really sure about a third. I, I yeah, I'm just trying. I'm, I'm like, so out of the loop with hardcores too. Do you do you think now that like the impossible kind of has been done that hardcore isn't as? I think there was actually a question kind of on this topic mm -hmm. of like not like hardcore Iron Man, the actual mode itself not being as popular anymore. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I can, I can kind of get that. 
like I'm also like that does keep me wondering as well. Like what if what if, what if what I did, you know, kind of um demotivated people to play hardcore because like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's already it's already been done, you know, it's also been streamed, it's been what if I'm demotivating people instead of motivating? Because I, I really want to be motivating people to play the game mode and like do things, but maybe I'm doing the opposite by completing <laughs> everything. I don't I'm not really sure. I, I hope not. I hope people like, wow, this is possible. I want to do it too. You know, I, that's that's kind of what I'm hoping. Yeah. Um, and there's also new content that's always coming out. Coliseum is going to be the big one. Like who's gonna, who? Uh, like I'm even thinking right now, just in my head, who's going to make it further? Shays or Mutz? Who's gonna Who's gonna have more <laughs> yeah. glory? You know, because yeah. as soon as Shays has something, then you know you might be like, True. okay, I kind of want to pass you. I want to get to that higher <laughs> yeah, wave, yeah, yeah. and then he's gonna want to. We might finally have a way to find to like actually compare accounts with yeah. the, the glory system. Literally, like wow, are you now better than me because you have more glory? You know, mm-hmm. that'd be kind of cool. You have like an actual ranking system, literally. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's just funny how um, you know it's, it's just <laughs> when I think of hardcores, you know, there's there's the hardcores that PVM and go crazy, and then there's the hardcores like um fifth hardcore and alkin this the xp mm-hmm. xp gainers it, how close is fifth hardcore to 200 mil all that is nuts oh he's extremely close last time i checked is like 200 mil left or something bro that is he's nuts. like he's like he's like actually competing for like iron man high scores which is, which is crazy like he's he's ranked three regular iron man Jesus like what christ he is currently yeah like uh 180 mil away i think yeah that's crazy. And That's what is actually crazy? Because he has, I'm assuming he has Infernal Cape. Doesn't he have like TOB stuff as well, or maybe not? What, what, do you know what his account uh, has on it? Let me actually look him up as well. Yeah, I got him up. I got him up pulled up right now. I don't think he has done TOB now, but he has. Well, I remember like his account, like back in the day, like he actually had one of the like more impressive hardcores in terms of items back then, before he like fully grinded for XP, I think. Um, because he had little, he had like a lot of Cerberus and even done like a bit of Gauntlet and he had an Infernal Cape. Uh, <laughs> he was like more progressed than the, the average hardcore in terms of PVM items. Back then he was kind of seen like, oh, that's that's kind of cool, you know. No one did Cerberus back then, essentially. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I don't know. Like uh, he actually has some items, but he's like six years ago or something that was like cool or five years ago that was like really cool yeah nowadays it's but like, he's like he's like outdated i guess like his yeah. gear is outdated but yeah he's only worked on xp since then so yeah exactly interesting i do you think he'll uh start pvming after he gets oh 200 mil all? i mean I, what, what does he even I, do I, after I, that? I feel like i feel like i would i doubt it until like sailing like i think it, maybe if maybe if he gets like 200 mil sailing maybe then he'll start pvming i don't know mm. <laughs> Because it's kind of like I feel like if sailing is like non-dangerous to train, mm-hmm. he might he might even have a shot at like getting rank one regular Iron Man. I think like that'd be crazy. Like having a hardcore Iron Man take the rank one Iron Man spot. <laughs> Imagine getting rank one overall spot, bro. Yeah, like that would that, be. That, that I don't even be think crazy. that's possible because I think there's gonna be so. I much, don't I doubt it. Yeah, so many. You can buy a bunch of stuff probably. Yeah, bro, that is so crazy. How a hardcore Iron Man is gonna hit 200 mil all? Like that is yeah that's disgusting um people, people have asked me like are you gonna go for 200 mil all now since you like <laughs> <laughs> doing all the pvm like um like you could be the first one like no i cannot <laughs> like, I, can, I cannot be the first one <laughs> definitely not the, what would be really crazy is if fifth hardcore i don't see this happening but if he were to start going for zuck helmet if you get a zuck helmet on the 200 mil Bro. all hardcore and then a blood oh torva on the 200 mil all, all hardcore you yeah. got balls of literal oh, granite. Man. That would be crazy. That would be really, really crazy. That would be insane. I don't think. I don't know. I, I, I just don't. I don't know how good he is. I mean, I'm assuming he's pretty talented, but yeah, there's a difference between like really having spent years and years PVMing on a hardcore, and he doesn't have that experience. Yeah, he's on 62 Zucks apparently, so he definitely can PVM yeah yeah that's true but but yeah, i don't know can he tell he <laughs> on exactly instinct? like yeah. yeah i don't know I, I, maybe but he's on so much skilling now maybe he can't do it anymore yeah maybe he's burnt there's also like there's so much more on the line as well like probably 
Like if you have two to mill all, like that the pressure is insane at that point. It's fucking nuts. Um all right. Rafa D asks, how bad are the death nightmares? Do you have death nightmares <laughs> often? Hardcore Iron Man death oh, I, nightmares? I used to have them, but I used to have like really weird ones, like I would go in like the you know like the clan wars fights yeah you, like have like the the arenas and stuff mm -hmm. like i would like go to into like a challenge and like i would die in in the in the clan wars and lose my status all of a sudden like what this <laughs> 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 is like weird stuff like that like stuff that can't actually happen but like it happens but that's like a long time ago i don't really have them anymore i think it's because i've done all the content in the game and like i can kind of confidently say that i know how to do everything and I think that's like a comforting way in a way. Like I don't expect myself to die or something. Mm -hmm. but I think I feel like it's something like that or I just stopped caring. I don't know. Those are. De yeah, I used to. I mean, I was hardcore very briefly on this account in my previous one. And right. Death Nightmares were definitely a thing. I, I can't remember <laughs> any of them. Obviously, it's been years, but yeah, it was, it was stressful for me playing a hardcore. I was not built for it. Yeah just stressed me out ultimately it was definitely addicting as hell like it's yeah, 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 yeah. super addicting but i don't know i just and i am always very impressed by hardcores that take it very far like you've obviously shown that um mm -hmm. but for me like when i usually when i would see hardcore ironman pvmers it was people just anglering up to 121 yeah. doing the safest bullshit <laughs> doing the slowest kills like it's just everything seemed more boring and for me yeah. that also just wasn't as uh, fun for me playing an iron man i really got to push the limits on like you know mm -hmm. flicking god wars and really like like starting to tick eat and all these really cool things that you would never do on a hardcore because you're just stupid yeah. it's just yeah. like why are you doing that true so there's a different aspect to um Iron Man that I I deeply enjoy, but for sure when I was a hardcore, oh, oh my god, the addiction is there. But you still have a hardcore, like wasn't that one that got unbanned? Like yeah, recently? yeah, actually I still do. It's just, it's just <laughs> named Sater, and uh, yeah. it's still there, just like eighteen hundred total, just Dragon yeah. Warhammer, you know, Fury. Got, got some, DFS right? Yeah, DFS. <laughs> got a uh, still never, he... never. Yeah, still never had one. Still never had a visage. Oh really? Yeah. Have you ever had one in old school, just in general? No, 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 like never on any account. Like wow, never, really? uh, I've had seven on, on seven? old school. Yeah, I guess I don't kill many dragons, but like I don't know. I feel like over over all my accounts, I definitely should have one, probably. Yeah, for sure you should. Yeah, I uh, visages are like one of those iconic drops on the ground that I I still yeah. like. They, they just look so nice. You see it, yeah. Like, oh. Um. But yeah, I still have that hardcore. I don't know. Uh, I, it's just... <sighs> Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how I play is like, I don't want... Like, I, I'm a, I'm a one account kind of person. I love having all progress on one account. That makes me feel like good. Yeah. If, I, if I had to split up accounts... Because like for you, I mean, bro, if you could combine all the progress you've made on all your hardcores and like kind of oh, just show yeah. how much shit you've really <laughs> done, that would be massive. Yeah. Definitely. So I, I personally like that. I like having everything on one account. The same thing, like I'm a clue scroll addict as well. So yeah. thinking about making a new account and doing clue scrolls and getting like third age on That's another fair. account would be disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to like grinding a bunch of clues because that's, I, I've always been excited by clues as well. Like I always would love doing them. Like being able to grind them would be, I've never really done that. Like camping like Seractus or something for clues. Like I've never really done that. So that's kind of, I'm kind of excited for that era, you know. And you've had pretty good third age luck, right? How many how many pieces of third age oh, yeah. have you had on old school? Um, three, I think. I got um on my main account before I had a I don't know maybe I had a hardcore like maybe maybe like very low level, but uh, I got a third age rope bottoms on my main, and I got <laughs> third age plate legs twice on uh back to back hardcore. So like my current one has one, and my previous hardcore also had third age legs, which is crazy. That is nuts. I would kill for third age play legs. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need to, I want the play buddy so bad to like yeah. have it with the legs. Oh, that would so, so giga chad, dude. Yeah. That see, that is something that's kind of cool. Like when you think about it, okay, third age, don't get me wrong, it's a it's a stupid grind to go for. Like it's yeah. so many hours, but 
Yeah. When you really put it into perspective, it's only about 550 hours for a third age piece if you're camping jays. Right. Yeah. Only. <laughs> like, like, go 5x I mean, range. Be, 550, that's honestly not too bad. Yeah, 550 hours for a third age, uh, for, for, a, for like on, on the hard tier. So yeah. it is a grind. It's like kind of going for like a Tebow or going for an Ellie or something. It's, yeah. It, ultimately, yeah. if you want a piece of third age, you just barrage jellies over and over. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be pretty cool. That's one of my ultimate goals still is to complete a third age set on an Iron Man. Dude, that'd be years. so sick, yeah. Oh, it'd be so dope. <laughs> there's there's a guy uh, named Faye Sten, uh, F.E. Yeah. Sten, and uh, he's a P. He's in my clan, actually. Oh, really? Oh, no, yeah. Well, he's in a, he's, he's a, as a guest, I think. Mm. But he's, uh, he's like a mod of mine. Yeah, that guy has a third age robe top and robe bottom, and then he has a kite shield yeah. and a coif. Yeah, I'm like, yep. bruh, <laughs> it's crazy. That is on an Iron Man. That's so sick. Yeah. Okay. Evan Scott asks favorite sandwich. Favorite sandwich. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I go. I mean, like the Netherlands. Like I don't know if it's normal for. I don't. I don't think it is. But like, as like we we eat like bread like all the time. Like we have, we eat like bread as like breakfast. We eat bread uh, as like lunch. <laughs> and the only time we don't eat bread is for like dinner. <laughs> but like, interesting. It, it's quite normal here to like just eat bread for breakfast and for lunch, and we just put something on there. But like, um, I wouldn't know if I have like a favorite. Like, I like if I really like when I treat myself. Like, I put like. Uh, Ham and cheese on it. I like that. Um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of... A, it feels like a weird question to me. Because yeah, it like is. We put, so, <laughs> we, put, we put so much on our bread. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have like... Um, sandwich shops? Like uh, like sub sandwiches over there? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We have like... Uh, like bakeries. Like, like actually like... Have like a bunch of sandwiches and stuff. We also like have... Even like supermarkets like have like pre made sandwiches like mm. or like baguettes with like stuff in there. We have a bunch of I mean, obviously in America you just have fast food joints and all these other things like sandwich shops, but Yeah. There's, there's a place called Jersey Mike's here. Oh mm -hmm. they have the best sandwiches. Cause they have like fresh sliced meat. So everything's really yeah. fresh. And then on top oh, of that, yeah. they just drench it in oil vinegar and salt and pepper and it's oh, just like you just right. get so like there's just so much flavor to it it's so good yeah yeah i love that um he's asking are hot dog sandwiches Ooh, i, I wouldn't class them as sandwiches me neither but, yeah i don't know i mean they are technically on a piece of bread or something i guess but nah <laughs> yeah okay how many holes are in a straw Two, right? <laughs> I would assume. Well, actually, oh, uh, wait. <laughs> wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, are you, what are you thinking now? Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe one. <laughs> Depends how you look at it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the, I, th I think I'd go with one, one hole. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. But as soon as you close one of the sides, there's still one hole. Uh. So what it, yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> True. True. Okay. Um. Yeah. Then other pe a lot of a lot of the topics, a lot of repeat stuff is just people asking what you're gonna do if you die. Do you have um like a hardcore on the side right now? Um. I'll let you in a secret. I've never told anyone this. Oh shit. <laughs> this is gonna be premium content. Hell yeah. I um. I used to have a hardcore that, uh, <laughs> so, okay, this is an undocumented death, but I actually did die on another hardcore. Oh my uh, God. You never yeah. told anybody? Nope. Never told anybody. No, <laughs> this is premium <laughs> content. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but I died the exact same way as works pretty much. Like <laughs> I died to a blue dragon. Oh my God. I, yeah. Pretty much. I was just like looking away and like, I look back and I'm dead. When was this? This is like, I don't know, it's like over a year ago, I think. This is like a pretty long time ago. Wow. Um, Were you it just... was going to be like a Rev Rush account, kind of. It was like really low level still. Yeah, having to multi-log something, I feel like is just a recipe for disaster. 
Yeah. Do you, so, well, are you allowed to say if you have uh, like a hardcore backup right now? Like that's secretive? Um, I, I do have one actually, but I don't think I will continue that account because mm. I didn't record. Well, I think I did record the content, but I want to kind of, kind of, kind of start from scratch for YouTube because I see. I don't know. It's not it's not a progressed account or anything. It's like got like bird houses unlocked and pretty much that's uh, that's about it. I so see. it's like uh, nothing crazy. You can just kind of ignore it. Uh, I don't even I don't even know if I remember to log in for it. To be fair, mm. it's been forever since I've logged onto it. But yeah, I think if I want to do another hardcore, I'll probably start it up uh, with the YouTube and like make a series out of it and go for something unique or something. I could see myself do like a ref rush. But I feel like that's kind of what everyone does nowadays. So maybe not. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's, I don't know. It's, uh, it's something else that you've gotten so far on the hardcore. Just things that I never thought were possible that have now been possible on multiple different, like multiple players have done it now. I just think it's, it's insane how far we've come. Cause I mean, you remember theater of blood. If you were playing, if you were doing theater of blood on the hardcore, you had yeah. hundreds and hundreds of viewers. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. And it was the most insane. Like, what are you doing? You're suicide. Like, you are crazy. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, you were, now. like, seen as, like, a god. It's oh. like, wow, you're doing TOB on your hardcore? You are crazy. Dude, do you remember when you could flex Zora No Diary? Like, that <laughs> yeah. was huge. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. <Right. laughs> oh, man. Different I, I mean, times. Yeah. No, it's totally and uh i mean even vorkath if you were doing vorkath you're like oh my god I yeah mean, that's still most people do vorkath when they don't have much gear so it is kind of exciting but ultimately sure. it's like okay this is vorkath it's <laughs> yeah it's vorkath yeah yeah times have definitely changed because like back in the day like if you did tob like you'd be like one like a god like you which is unheard of, right? Yeah. Uh, nowadays, if you don't rush TOB or Dragon Scimitar, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Literally. people are just doing it like early game now. So it's crazy. Yeah, this is a lot of a lot has changed. The community has gotten so much better in general. Like the player base just has so much more game knowledge and so much more PVM ability. Uh, yeah, the, the skills ceiling is like quite high now. Are you going to RuneFest? I am, yes. Are you? Yes, I'm going to go. Excited to I'm meet really you. excited. Yeah, there's a ton of people I've, I want to meet. You've, I, you've not you've not gone yet, right? No, never. Okay. Yeah, so yeah I went to uh, went to the last one. So that's 2019. That's kind of crazy. That's 2019. That's five years ago. I know. That's so crazy. It that was just that was just a different experience, man. It was just so crazy, like. Even back then, like back then, I wasn't obviously as big as I was now in terms in terms of a content creator. Um, but like, even back then, it felt like I was a celebrity for a weekend. You know, like <laughs> it, it, it's it's crazy. Like everyone suddenly knows you, like walks to you, and like it's like oh my god, it's Mutz. Like, and you're like, who are you? Are you shaking his hand? Like, or, <laughs> like it's 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 such a such a crazy experience. I'm so excited. And I've talked to and so many, meeting, yeah, yeah. I've talked to yeah, so many everyone. people now, and like, I mean, even it, it yeah. feels like for you, like now I've had you on two casts, and like meeting you in person will just be like, it's just weird meeting because I've de I've been to TwitchCon, like that was just in October, and so that was already yeah. like a really cool experience of just meeting people in the flesh. It's just it's always just surreal initially. Yeah, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited, and it'll be my first time uh, in Europe, so. Oh, that's ever sick. across the Atlantic, technically. So, have you ever been out to the states, or I've been to Mexico, and I think I've like driven into Canada briefly, like when I was a kid. Right. But that's it, pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely going to be a new experience. I'm really excited. I heard yeah. Birmingham's a shithole, though. That's what I heard on that <laughs> some tweet. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Uh, I've never been there, but. I don't know. I feel like every place. I feel like it, people are over exaggerating it. Every place has slides, like a bad area. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like especially if it's like a bigger city. Like, yeah, there will be stuff happening in big, bigger cities that are not as nice. But that's like every big city. Mm -hmm. so, like I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be fine. It's just, it's just yeah. over exaggerated. 
probably. Totally. I, I hope so. <laughs> now it'll be it will we'll be we'll all be together in the little yeah little rune fest, and then hopefully um we'll see what uh, how the housing is. I'm I'm still holding on to a little glimmer of hope that hopefully maybe Jagex pays for part of my trip. We'll see. Probably not, but yeah. Um, Who knows? If not, there's definitely going to be some crazy meetups. Probably I think Based is doing some like oh yeah crazy parties probably so i'm just excited for it all um all right uh mutts thank you very much for your time today this was about three hour cast uh yeah i guess we'll Ooh, wrap my. yeah yeah oh it always does it just always yeah does. i guess we'll wrap things up with uh asking for three shout outs from the community so uh, Ooh. i'll let you go for that oh god i was really I was thinking about this before the cast and like, oh God, who the hell, well, who do I even shout out? I, don't, <laughs> I, I was like most nervous for this question. Like, what? <laughs> um, hmm, three shout outs. Okay. Damn. Um, <laughs> uh, and I like, does it have to be one person? No, it can be whatever you want, ultimately. Um, and it doesn't have to be top three either. It just be three people that you okay. think deserve one. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I would say big shout out to like the, the people, the people, <laughs> the people that watch the YouTube because, like, dude, the YouTube is just like crazy. Like, it's getting shown so much love and like the comment section really... goes so wholesome. <laughs> yeah, like the, the all the comments on like the, the recent videos are just also like so wholesome and so cool. And man, I love them. Even though I feel like I'm so new to them, like people discovering my channel, like in like the recent few months, and yeah, seeing the support on there is crazy. So that's uh, the first big shout out. Um, second shout out, man, I really <laughs> actually, yeah, Ari Slash is getting a shout out. Um, I have recently been listening to a lot of trans and. This year, it feels like, or like last year, I guess, feels like my trans year. My like Spotify rap was like mostly trans, and uh, yeah, I listen, I listen to his playlist all the time. So, yeah, big shout out to Ari for providing me with the best playlist currently for uh, 2023 and probably 2024 as well. I've, I've just been seeing that I just put on the the trans playlist a lot more than my usual playlist nowadays because I just I don't know. Just, my my old playlist is just like eh, there's there's too many songs on there. It feels. Mm. Um. Last shout out goes to. I would say Shays, because uh, he is uh, it's it's nice to have competition. I like having competition, and he beat me to Blorva, which is absolutely fine. It just uh, kind of made me. Want to go for it even more? To be fair, so a big shout out to uh, Mr. Shades and Praise. I'm gonna do an extra one, Praisewood as well, because yeah, he uh, they are both really inspiring players to me. Like the fact that they achieved these things as like a first time, like Praisewood with the Grandmaster, which was just deemed impossible for the longest of times, showing that it is possible, and then Shades with the Blorva, which is yeah just amazing how talented the players are and, uh, big shout out to them for achieving it first and showing it's possible so hell yeah big big motivation awesome great shout outs uh mutts this is really nice it's always a pleasure talking to you um keep keep it up i mean i mean i don't even know what to keep up anymore you just you've already done all the impossible shit but uh i'm <laughs> just it's really cool to see how far you've pushed the game mode and uh, how how much you've accomplished. So uh, huge um, GZ on all that, and I wish you the best of luck on your YouTube adventures and your current hardcore, getting uh, more pets and collection logs and stuff. And I'm just wishing you all the best. Thank um, you, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, and for those still listening, down in the description, be sure to click on Mutt's links. I'll have his YouTube, his Twitch, his Twitter, anything else. You want links? Uh, that's that's it, I think. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And if you guys want to support thank the you. cast, oh, sorry, what were you gonna say? No, no, I just said thank you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> and if you guys want to support the cast, there's a uh, YouTube membership link and a Patreon link as well. You can support it, get your name on the title screen. But uh, 
yeah, that's it for me. Next uh, week, actually, months, you'll know these people. Uh, we're getting Ooh. Joe Watermelon and Scott VC oh. on the cast together. The little duo. The boys. The little duo. Okay. Yeah, the boys. The Scottermelons. That's what I call them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll uh, we'll have them on. So it's uh, they're both two maxed Iron Men with, uh, I mean, just basically all pieces of gear. They're just loaded. So I'm really excited to talk Iron Man PVM with them. So look forward to that. And thank you again, Mutz. Thank you to all listening. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.